This is Infection, the survival podcast recorded live on Tuesday, July 7th, 2020, temp- episode 286. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode of Infection, the survival podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. We bring you the latest news, reviews, updates, and more each and every week. My name, as always, is Nick Craig. You can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. You can also follow me on Parlor. I know a lot of people are on that these days, at Nicholas M. Craig as well. You can check out my IT blog at dudeinit.com. And of course... The reason that you're here, InfectionPodcast.com. Joining me as he does each and every week from the great state of Idaho, Brian with an I, Aldrich. Hello, Brian. How are you? Yes. I'm doing very well. Uh, Hopefully you had a great uh, 4th of July weekend. Yes, sir. So um, first of all, let's go ahead and start off with, if you want to find me, you can find me on Twitter at Boise Computer. Um, I'm on Parlor. I think you search for Brian Aldridge and I'll be there. Uh, I don't remember if I use Boise Computer or Brian Aldridge, but I'm I did. I think okay, so. You found there. Me, yeah. um, and if you uh, if you want to find us on our website, uh, make sure you go to infectionpodcast.com. Check out on the right hand side. You'll see join our server on Discord. And if you do that, you can submit news throughout the week. That's one nice thing that we have. It allows you to go in and put links in there. And before every show, I'm reviewing that page, that channel. And, uh, and integrating what I can into the show. So that's a good way to help us out with different topics. Uh, maybe there's perhaps a game or something that we're not covering that you think we should. Maybe it's a, a survival game of some sort or an upcoming game that we haven't heard about. You can submit it in that channel and we'll check it out uh, and get it ready for an upcoming show. Uh, also on there, if you want to fo- follow us on uh, video formats, we've got YouTube, uh, we have with D Live, we have uh, we don't have Mixer anymore, but we have Twitch and uh, what's the last one we have? Let's see. I think this uh, that more. would be BitChute. Oh, BitChute! Thank you very much. Uh, and also, we have our audio only form. So perhaps you're on the road or you want to listen while you're at work and have it uh, where you can download it and just listen to it on your own time. We've got all those different forms in the lower right. Uh, also, we have on there the show notes for all the episodes up to this point. So I think we're on episode 286 now. So uh, if you're wanting to listen along after the fact, you're more than welcome to pull up those show notes and you can pull up those links and kind of go along with us uh, as we're doing the episodes. So uh, if you want to support us, I did take off the tab to the left that says support us. But up top in the menu, we actually have a support tab. So that will uh, take you to the exact same place. Uh, but going through and making the site a little bit more uh, fast as far as the loading speeds and just kind of checking that everything is right. Uh, and I found that there's some weird little issues with mobile with that side tab. So, but everything should be going good. Uh, and I think that's about it for me. Excellent. Well, um, yeah, Brian, I hope you had a uh, hope you had a nice uh, Fourth of July Independence Day as well. What uh, what what kind of festivities were you up to? So I went up to a small mountain town uh, oh. in idaho oh, and okay. just hung out did fireworks up there hung out with all the townspeople and uh floated a river you know just and had zero cell phone service the whole time which was oh, kind really? of really that's nice. very cool yeah I, yeah I had absolutely no my parents my parents my my mom left me a voicemail and luckily like i did have internet in one of the you know one place that i went to and i saw are you okay <laughs> You know, as a voicemail, because <laughs> she, she's trying to call me, you know, and I stayed a day later than I intended to. Um, and so, yeah, but it was kind of nice not even have to worry about it and just kind of enjoying the weekend and and just having fun. So. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I um, I did something similar. Um, I uh, went out on a went out with a friend and uh, and on the boat here on the uh, intercoastal waterway on Sunday and uh, cruised up and down and uh, anchored at a couple little sandbars and just kind of hung out and uh, beach bummed around as uh, as they do mm-hmm. so <clears throat> that was good a good independence day there was uh yeah the governor here was like don't no fireworks and i swear to god it sounded like vietnam from like 7 30 p.m to two o'clock in the morning i live in an apartment complex so you can imagine like <laughs> like there's just you talk about like it's condensing as many people as possible into you know there's i'm on the third floor of an apartment building so there's yeah. And there's multiple of these buildings. So you talk about pop, dense, uh, uh, you know, a dense population of people. They're all here. 
So everybody was yeah. shooting off fireworks. And I was just I was well, just standing outside drinking a beer, watching fireworks at like one o'clock in the morning. It was great. So here we have I, I'm friends with uh the people that own pretty much the largest year round fireworks stand. You're not ah, a stand, but it's like a, a, a place yeah. here. Uh and actually has their website and so I changed the times and things on their website when they're because they're here, they work like really long hours coming up to this and then yeah. you know, so it changes on pretty regularly. And they had they had emailed me and they said they sold out of 90% of their product this year. That's great. Uh, which is pretty high because there was no public shows and like everybody. So the whole Valley, I wasn't here to see it, but from what I heard, like it was just everywhere. It was like a mass show. Um, and like where I was at, I brought up, I went there and picked up, you know, like 500 bucks for the fireworks and then took it, them up this town. And that pretty much did a show for this small town. It was pretty fun. I um I saw a great meme on Twitter, or it wasn't it wasn't a meme, but it was like a it was it was like KTLA or something in Los Angeles, and they had their helicopter, mm -hmm. and it was like illegal fireworks. There must have been four hundred fireworks in the air. It was a helicopter flyover, and there were so many fireworks in the air. Yep. It literally looked like a war zone. It was so funny. Um, so so that that was cool to see. Um, it was you know it was actually interesting, Brian. You know I um. I don't know why we're talking about fireworks now, but you know, the public shows are, are, you know, obviously they're big and they're elaborate, but they're a huge pain in the ass. Like you got the yeah. parking blows, you're on top of everybody. Like you're not at home for the most part, depending on where you live. Yeah. I kind of like this a little bit better where it was just, there was no organization and people were just shooting off mm -hmm. fireworks. It was, it was kind of neat. You get, I mean, you get you get a good show anyways, and yeah, I think and even that, if you don't get a good show, at least here. you're home, and you don't have to like deal with like tr like you know, years past. I'd go to downtown Wilmington for the fireworks show. You got to park in a freaking parking garage. It takes forty five yeah. minutes to an hour to get out. It's just a huge pain. Fireworks are cool, yeah. but mm, I don't know, maybe not. Anymore. Yeah, I think this. I think personally, this is a little bit better, just because you can sit back. I mean, if you're you're anywhere near t a, a, like an inner town or inner city. Like you'll just have constant, oh, yeah. and, and you know they're not quite the same, but they're pretty close to what you get at a professional show. I mean, they just don't go up quite as high. But when when you're surrounded by them, you don't need them to go quite as high. They're not having yeah. to present to half of the you know half of the area. So yeah, yeah I it thought was it was so. Yeah, it was cool. I had a, I had a good fortune. I'm glad you did. I'm uh, and hopefully uh, everybody out there in uh, internet land uh, had uh, had a good one as well. Uh, real quick before we get into news and whatnot, Brian, Seven Days to Die. We played a little bit of the. Uh, uh, Alpha 19 experimental. We got through our mm -hmm. first day seven. Um, it looks incredible. Plays yeah. really well. Um, Good. We were having some issues with the server, but um, the it 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 played great. The assets looked incredible. Um, the, uh, the the traders. There's new, more than one trader now. <laughs> um, there's uh, so a bunch of things that have changed with that. Uh, uh, no shine for for mine says there are no rocks on the ground. That is true. There is an incredible. I was, that's the thing is when I went in to test it, I was trying to make a little pickaxe just to make sure everything worked. <laughs> and I'm I'm looking around for a rock. Somehow I picked up one. I have no idea how. And I'm looking. I'm running around. And yeah, I like couldn't find a single rock. Yeah, yeah. It was tough. And I'm like, all right. I just I'm, it works. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So so um so we did that. Uh, we we played that for a little bit. Um had a had a good time. Uh, hopefully we'll jump back into it. Hope maybe this weekend or something. But yeah, uh, yeah we could get up. And I, I know they put out, we'll be talking about the patch notes uh, <clears throat> for another update that they have done to it since you played. So hopefully at this point, uh, you know, whatever was causing the server to crash, because I wasn't seeing it in the log and I was remote, like I could only get internet in the one building. So yeah. I'd go in there, restart the server. It seemed uh, like but hopefully quests they've got that. that so were something in the, the with the quest was crashing. It. Yeah. Cause oh, it, so hopefully I, they figured that out and patched it to where next week or this coming weekend, if we're playing it, then <clears> we won't have that issue. Yeah, because it was weird. Like the first time it crashed, um, Saul and I were doing a dig quest, and literally the second that we unlocked the box and I pressed E, it <laughs> the server just could crash. So I, I can only assume yeah. that it was that it was the quest that crashed it. But again, you're playing on an late you're playing on a latest experimental build, so you you know you that you get what you pay for. Um, yeah, but it it was fun. We had a good time with it. Um, the servers. I think it's up now. Um, if you search for the Infection Podcast server, the the password. I'll have is to look. Our... No, I think I stopped it last night. I oh. wasn't sure if you wanted me to keep it up, but okay. I could start it up at any time. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have that server up. Uh, the password is in our Discord. If you go to our Discord, you can find the password in the servers channel. Um, 
and uh, yeah, we had a good time with it. Hopefully, we'll schedule. Um, actually, well, we'll do it for uh, for this Friday. We'll sc- game of the week will be Alpha Nineteen. Um, we'll pick it up. Uh, we'll pick it up on on Friday night. So hopefully you'll uh, hopefully you'll join us for that. The latest experimental bill of seven days to die. All right. Um, well, Brian, we uh, we did a show last week. A little bit different than our uh, our normal uh, our normal show. Um, and funny enough, we actually got a lot of positive feedback, which I uh, was mm-hmm. was not expecting. Um, and, uh, uh, as, as I think, as I said last week on the program, we're not changing the format of the show in any which way. Um, but based on the feedback we received last week, I think we're going to push forward with these, um, and for some people would find them uncomfortable conversations, uh, but conversations that I want to continue to have on this program. And frankly, it's, you know, it's my show. It's Brian's show. If we're going to, if we want to have the conversations, well, we're going to do one it. thing I would one thing I would encourage people is if you think that we're wrong on a topic, reach out, get, give us your, Bingo, your reasoning boom, of why you think it's uh why you think it's something that we're wrong on. Because I mean, I know that for me, I put a lot of thought and I put a lot of research into how I pretty much make my thoughts, right? I don't just read some article and say, Oh, now that's how I think. And so you don't uh, just you know, watch I'm Joe Rogan willing to change. Boom, boom, and then you become yeah, an don't expert just in something like <laughs> Joe Rogan and be like, oh, now I'm an expert I, on COVID-19. People are like, oh, wow. <laughs> Yo, you, I was listening to some guy in Rogan and it was like, are you retarded? You listen to a three hour podcast with a literally mentally handicapped guy, Joe Rogan, and, and some PhD. And now you're going to talk to me like you intelligently know about a topic. Are you out of your freaking mind? It's the one Joe Rogan isms is are so freaking funny. I love it. <laughs> one thing I do appreciate that he does say though. He says he does say he says I'm an idiot. I don't understand this. I've done enough research to be able to ask him the right questions. Yeah, but I have no clue what he's saying. I just, <laughs> That's pretty I much just, how I talk. I just love the people that'll ha- try to have an intellectual conversation based on watching a three hour podcast. But they can only do quotes gets from, that were actually head. on the podcast. Like they can't <laughs> yeah. actually give any extra information. So I. I uh, here's and they give you a fact. Uh, yeah, that's just what the dude said. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. A um, couple yeah. quick subscribers here. Our friend uh, Chronics nineteen oh four says, "Love the show, guys. Keep up the fantastic weekly content. Thank you very much, Chronics. Uh, we greatly appreciate it." And then uh, no shine for mine. Our friend Ringo hit us up with the uh, resubscription here on Twitch as well. Thank you, Ringo. We uh, we appreciate it, my man. Thank you for uh, he he hung out, played some uh, seven days on Saturday. Oh, cool. Friday night, I don't remember what day we, we played, but uh, <clears throat> thank both of you. We uh, we greatly appreciate it. So going back to what, what we were saying, Brian, before I took us into Joe Rogan land, um, we got a lot of positive feedback um, on our on our conversations. Um, we got some YouTube comments, a couple private messages, some tweets. So we're going to mm-hmm. you know, we're going to continue with this stuff um, when it's relevant. And it, it happens to be relevant this week as well. We'll get into that a little bit yeah. uh, later on in the program. But Brian, I've, we've got to open with a uh, within a very important game here, Chronicles of Illyria. Now, <laughs> I think one of the first like in the first year when we went to PAX, this is one of the interviews that we did that I that we did not post. We did not air it on the show, if I remember correctly. We did. We did refer back to it, and I think we pulled it up and maybe played some of it on a later show, just uh, you know, like a year later or something. But uh, yeah, this is Chronicles of Valyria, which we at the time said, this sounds ridiculous. Like, I don't know how in the world they're expecting to do this. So it was supposed, oh, and I think we're not going to go crazy into it, but it was this crazy massive game they had raised. How many, can you look it up real quick? They've raised, like, it was like 10 or $15 million. It was a copious amount of money for what, now, it, it wasn't a copious amount of money for what they were trying to do, but for such a small team and for the product that they had already produced, it was a copious amount of, of money. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, they raised over seven point seven million. Yeah, and produced literally nothing. Um, Absolutely so it was a, nothing. Yeah, it was a lot of money for not a lot of product. They announced maybe six or so months ago, maybe five months ago, that they were not continuing with the development of the game. Which no, this was may- no. Well, this was that. I mean, I don't think it was that long ago. No, okay, it, maybe it was like maybe a month, it was two or three. It was months. like a month or two ago. Okay, yeah. 
so they they announced that they were not the development was stopping. They were they were they were done with the game. And mm-hmm. I think at that point, Brian, you and I both said on this program they're going to get sued. Um, yes. And it in fact turns out now that a group inside of a uh, a Discord has found a uh, a law group, um, a law firm who is taking up their case. Um, and he's confirmed that the, that the that the law group is going to be filing a class action lawsuit at the end of this month, and will begin taking action following that. Um, yeah. So you know they've got they've got the terms of agreements in here for like a, for a class action lawsuit, um, but it's going to be a joint case against um, the, what's that key reseller um, starts with a Z, uh, Zola or whatever whatever they are, and then the development company. Um, so it's going to yeah, be a Zola, joint, Zola or whatever. I think yeah, it's Zola. So, yep. So it's going to be it's going to be a, a dual lawsuit against both of them, um, and uh, it'll it'll be interesting to see here what what comes of what comes of this. I think we've yeah. seen this. Um, I don't think we have. We have seen this stuff in the past. Sure, this is not the first class action lawsuit towards a video game. But it will be the interesting thing about this will be how how will these two small groups be able to defend themselves? Because yeah. that's kind of how this is that that's how this is going to go. Um, well, I mean, this pretty much comes down to an individual. First of all, I mean, we we met and interviewed the person who is pretty much being sued in this. Yeah, uh, and I remember us kind of looking it up. Uh, most of the the funds were paid to him as a salary. Uh, you know, and he was paying quite a bit of money to go get a booth and do all do all these things, which at, is important. All these conventions, yeah, which is important. But if you're not making a product, it's not important. No, agreed. You know, uh, you know. So that for him, I just remember us sitting back and him listing off all these features that they wanted. Uh, and then when we played, I mean, six. Well, I don't. It was a year ago, six months ago, when we played that video showing oh, yeah. their progress video. Just seeing how poorly that was made i mean the character animations the world detail i mean just everything for 7.7 million dollars it was way short of the mark and nothing like any of the previous uh promotional material like what they were showing as far as what the world was going to look like what any of the characters any of the just the concept was not there it's like they threw together a very basic um world you know, with kind of, you know, basic things and ran around that. Because similar to that one where, what was that game that was the, uh, it was like the, like a life thing where um, it was a single word, if I remember correctly, and they had that warehouse. They had the guy running around in the warehouse and it just looked like something you'd purchase off the asset store with very basic animation. Oh, God. Oh, uh, oh Jesus. No, I uh, it's a single you're... word. Yeah. I'm trying to yeah, remember what yeah. it's called. But, um, but that one, I mean, that it w- wasn't quite as egregious as that because that was just ridiculous. Uh, the next one, you know, this this one was it was just no. It, the problem is seven point seven million dollars. You expect to have a f- nearly fully flushed out game for the amount of years. I mean, this was four years, right? Oh, Five more years? than that. I mean, that was it seven years. So it was, it was a like long that. amount of yeah. time that they were working on this with seven point seven million dollars, and then they were saying that they didn't have the funding they need and they kept on trying to raise more funding. Yes, seven point seven million dollars. You haven't produced a single thing. Huh? And then they blamed yeah, on coronavirus. That, that, <laughs> that's where I that's where I know is within the last six months that this happened. Yeah. Because yeah, they were saying, yeah, due to coronavirus, uh, you know, we don't have the funds to continue to do just in, insane. <laughs> so Yeah, well, we're about to see Brian um how well the studio was keeping track of their assets. Um Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it called when um when in a lawsuit when you can kind of look into the other company's books um it's like the investigation period of a law- lawsuit um yeah where you can go through and and you know they'll have access to to a lot of the financial information from these companies to try to make their discovery thank you Saul um yeah i mean throughout discovery the lawyer would answer well i wanted a lawyer to answer cuz i'm not <laughs> but yeah through, throughout the discovery um they'll find and see, you'll we'll find out, Brian, where this money was spent if, in fact, they were keeping track of it. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I I would assume that they were smart enough to protect themselves from this. I don't really know the legality of how class action lawsuits really work. Um, 
But I would ima- I, I could imagine if this law firm that's that's working with them has got any experience in in law uh, you know large class action lawsuits they they probably could win something. I don't know how big it's going to be, but. Well, or if there's any assets is, to even win, that's part of the other problem. Well, I think that's why they're going after Zola, because oh, that true. is a yeah. bigger company. I think they would if that's probably why they didn't go specifically after uh, this group. Pretty much, this Soulbound Studios, which is the group that that was making it, and Jer- uh, Jeremy Walsh, he's the guy. I think the director. I think that's mm-hmm. who we spoke to, if I remember correctly. Uh, but that's why they're not just going after them because they claim there's no funds anyways. They'd be suing pretty much an individual or a, a, or a company that now doesn't exist anymore. They would have a, a very difficult time going in and tr- getting any real funds from this because they'll just they'll file bankruptcy. Nobody will get any money and it'll be over, right? Um, but going in, including Zola into this and saying, hey, well, maybe you guys didn't do proper monitoring because this this or this company is pretty much supposed to be under your direction uh and i think that's why they're bringing them in to say hey you you let this go on we're gonna demand that you or them you know which other one has the funds which is going to be them uh are the ones that are probably going to be forced to produce the money of whatever comes out of this so this will be cool to watch i don't think i don't think since we've been doing this show we've had a game that we've seen at its early infancy then cease to exist then a lawsuit pop up and then it'll be now uh, class action lawsuits aren't very quick in their resolutions but i don't foresee us going anywhere anytime soon so hopefully we'll be able to see this through and it'll be interesting to follow through and what will be more interesting than anything else brian will be what kind of precedent legal precedent this sets for other games going forward um yeah. And maybe the maybe the, the you know the the big problem you have with some of these games, in my opinion, is this term crowd funding, and you're having yeah. people pledge to a product that is not fully fledged out, and and that's going to be interesting. But I'm we, over my we've head lived about legal stuff. But you know we've lived through we lived through this whole just crowdfunding ridiculous that's kind of driven people away from supporting indie developers because this thing exactly the having companies that throw away your funds or say that they're going to they're going to do something never produce anything uh you know spend it all on whatever you know personal salaries and and other things showing minimal content and then at the end saying all right sorry we couldn't do it you know have a nice day yeah they paid themselves for three or four years off of all those funds uh and never had to actually work so that that's kind of you know i would be nice if this did kind of set the precedence all right if you're going to be crowdfunding and you're going to be trying to create a product, you better do your best due diligence in making sure that product comes to market. Because if you don't, there is a chance you get sued and make an example with these guys because they raised enough to make an example of. You know, yeah. It's not some group that raised $30,000 know, and said, oh, sorry, we misjudged, we couldn't do it. No, they raised $7.7 million by October 2019. Well, so damn money. Uh, they had the funds to do it. They just they mismanaged the funds in, in the project. Yeah, it, it appears to be that way. Um, we want to thank our, our buddy UGX Vibe for hitting us up with the 29 month resubscribe with the hashtag free doc. Um, honestly, that, <laughs> honestly, Bob, I, I'm expecting a double subscription to our channel now that you can't subscribe to doc anymore, which, by the way, <laughs> there's still no news on. Bingo, boom, um, I know. I've been watching it. So, uh, oh, look at this. Uh, our friend Unicorn Joe is just gifted a, uh, a sub to our friend JD. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, we uh, we yes, appreciate that. Much. Thank thank you, sir. Um, I um, yeah, I'm 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 very interesting. I'm I'm very interesting. I'm very, very interested. No, I am an interesting person. I do a podcast. <laughs> um, I'm very interested to see how this is going to flesh out and how. Uh, now, the other big thing too, of course, is this lawsuit's going to take place in the United States. So, mm-hmm. in in most. Uh, from what I understand about these, this is going to be a U.S. only issue. Um, yeah. So that is, you know, that's going to be it. So. Yep. Yep. That is that. Chronicles of Illyria. Watch out. Actions have consequences, yep. Brian. And Oh, um, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> and isn't that crazy? You're not going to just yeah. be able to steal $8 million <laughs> from people and not release a product? Uh, you know, God, God forbid. Yeah. So we'll, we will see. Um, hopefully this... Hopefully something comes of it and we'll see some actual changes and 
make the uh, this market better because it would be nice to be able to see crowdfunding work again, right? Because crowdfunding originally uh, helped get games to market and it was a legitimate thing. And then you had people come in realizing, oh, we can make a bunch of money off of this, screw people over, you know, what's the difference? Uh, and then we end up with, you know, these situations. So hopefully they can get that straightened out and crowdfunding actually goes towards making real games again. Yeah, I haven't seen one in a while. Well, actually, and there's one we'll be talking about. Um, I don't know if you want to just jump to that next, but yeah, uh, let's, there's yeah, another can, game that... Yeah, we can jump to so it. So let's talk uh, about the Black Death. Uh, yeah, but hold on. One, one second before we talk about Black ahead. Death. Uh, just back on the, the, the crowdfunding thing. Brian, I think, and you you've probably saw this in your tech world... In the, you know, in the early to mid two thousands, everything that mm -hmm. spun up was because of angel investors, and that was the big yeah. thing. You had all of these people, Mark Cuban being one of them, that made all of this money on the dot com boom, and they just started throwing cash at anything. And that's and the, and the angel investors are still a thing that exists. But you had angel investors in which you'd just pitch these people ideas. It was essentially like Shark Tank. You sell them half your company, give them half the stake in your company, and they give you a bunch of money to build a product. That in the, you know, mid, when I say mid 2000s is going to be like the 2010, 2011 era switched over to the Kickstarter method where it yeah. was, okay, now we don't have to go find an angel investor, but the pro, yep. but the big difference between the, something like an angel investor and the crowdfunding is with the angel investor, those guys were brutal. There was accountability and there were, you know, yeah. there was a contract set up that if you weren't able to perform, you were left holding the bag. Crowdfunding yep. has, is is kind of the wild west. You can frankly do whatever, almost whatever the hell you want. And this uh, Chronicles of Illyria, there's no class and there's very lawsuit. minimal legal liability in the end. Uh, well, the at least from what I understand, now this class action lawsuit lawsuit might show otherwise, but it, yeah. it's kind of uh, you can essentially rob people. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you can take the funds and run for the most part, and yeah. there's no legal no obvious legal consequences most of the time uh, because people, you know, for 30, let's say, as I said, mentioned before, a $30,000 crowdfunding campaign, the amount that it takes to get lawyers involved and to do all that, you're not going to get anything out of it. That's why it, it will take a $7.7 .7 million crowdfunding situation like this to actually make it worth going after. You know, they're hoping they can do a crowdfunding you know, request that we get $7 million back as, as, you know, whatever, try to get the money back. And then people who purchased or crowdfunded can opt in to go half of that, probably go to legal fees. So you probably get half of your money back if they 35% right. is going to go to legal fees. Yeah. Just, to yeah. Pay, to you know what I'm saying? So, so they'll, yeah. they'll have a large chunk of the legal fees, but it'd be more than they would ever get otherwise, because there's nothing else account holding these people accountable. Agreed. So yeah, not, not to sidetrack too much, but, um, and by the way, when we get some more of this, we do have our resident legal expert, Saul Greatman. So when we find more legal stuff, we'll be sure to tap mm -hmm. his resource and hopefully he doesn't send us too big of a bill, um, to, yeah. uh, to, to give us some advice on the program. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. Watch out. <laughs> it'll, yes. it'll bite you. Um, so one thing I was going to make, uh, actually, thanks PH for posting this. He posted this update, uh, that just came out, I think today or yesterday actually yesterday okay. uh, but this is with the black death which i don't think mm -hmm. i have installed anymore so i didn't notice the update uh but they haven't put it i mean you probably noticed we have not had news on the black death for quite some time i don't even remember mm -hmm. it was sometime last year maybe that we had an update note we haven't heard anything since uh and so they go in here and say we apologize for the persistent delays uh on the content update rebellion which is one they've been working on uh, and so they say, why is it taking so long? And they said, first, uh, three, three main points to this. They said they've done two uh, engine upgrades um, you okay. know, in, in, during this patch. That's just legit. To probably, I, I think because they're trying to take advantage of some sort of mechanic or some sort of feature uh, that had to be rebuilt from scratch because of the way that it now works in you know, the new engine update which is unreal engine so probably you know some new feature that they were doing manually and they wrote all the code for and now it's built in the engine and be better to use the engine to do it uh the second thing they've had a higher than average refund rate uh oh, so around 20 percent <laughs> during the entire uh, early access period uh, no matter the content or fixes so Bingo, they said we acknowledge that this has climbed a little in recent months due to server activity player count 
which is understandable, but we discovered this due to the game systems at a base level and its initial impression. So we are fleshing out the game almost to the point uh, where it'll be a fresh experience. Um, you know, they're, so they're pretty much trying to make it to where it seems more interesting. Like I think they're making the point, kind of like what I said. I, you guys remember when I first logged in, I couldn't interact with, interact with any doors. Like there was nobody I could talk to. Like half the features didn't work when I got in there. So they're going to try to make it a better, uh, more engaging experience for the beginning. And third, they said this is which is the most impactful. As, as two and a half years, uh, they've had to acquire part-time work to pay for the game's development server charges. And so they're prepared to do this since their utmost priority is to complete the game no matter what the cost. Uh, but this has directly affected the amount of time that they were able to spend developing it. So um, God, that's pretty much that beyond much pisses why. me off, Brian. Man. They just made a blog post that, yeah, it costs money to operate a business. Yep. Really? I mean, that that's I, I'm wondering, I don't know how many sales they did on this. Uh, but, yeah, but hold on, go, hold on. Um, go to the, read their last point again. Okay, so they said that um, in the past two and a half years, since uh -huh. they they've had to acquire a, a part time work to pay for the game's development and server charges, and so the, then they said we were prepared to do this since their primary goal is to complete the game, um, but you know uh that that's been taking away pretty much probably half their time at least. So they've had to get part-time jobs to live so that to, they can develop the game to for live free. So that they continue developing the game. Yeah. So what it sounds like to me, Brian, mm -hmm. is that they undercapitalized their product. They didn't raise enough money yes. and, or they wanted to accomplish too much. So yeah. What it sounds like to me, and they just wrote a blog post. Uh, you know, I, I have sympathy for small businesses. Now they do have, Brian. they do have, they do have patch. They do show some of the things that are coming up. You know, um, I mean that's fine. Things that they're working on, but. but they just, I mean, they just made a blog post about how yeah, it costs money. To, it's it's not, it's not cheap to operate a business. It's not cheap to start a video game. I, Brian, I don't have yeah. any sympathy. I hate to sound like a dick, but I just, I, I don't, I don't have any sympathy for that. That that well, is, I, I think game development is brutal. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, most people don't realize that in game development, uh, it's very difficult, first of all, to make a product that doesn't have tons of bugs that, I mean, how many times have we've talked about hackers um, and all these mechanics, especially with the type of games that we play that are just pr prone to having hackers come in and, and ruin the experience like that happens. Uh, most of these studios go in not understanding all of those things, not understanding all of the actual work and cost that goes into it. Because when you go into this, you have to calculate in. Unreal Engine takes, uh, you know, for them, Unreal Engine takes a portion. Whether you sell it on Steam or whatever marketplace, they take mm -hmm. a large cut. That's yeah. pretty much those two together are half of the funds. Oh, yeah. uh, and then if you have some sort of a publisher, uh, you know, whatever licensing Credit card fees, processing, yeah. 3DS, 3DS Max uh licensing fees are can be fairly high uh you know whatever assets if you purchase assets if you're making assets all these things just take money and time and time is money and so by the time you get to the point of developing and release and trying to develop and release a game uh that you know you you go in there thinking oh well we have enough money to pay myself well no no you need double that <laughs> you need whatever it costs to license and pay for you know so pretty much cut the amount of the of what you take in in half and then that'll be, you know, you can then start paying yourself and paying your bills with that. Uh, but that's that's what you're going to be working with. I think most people don't go into this uh, market realizing that that is the case. And that's why so many of these these Kickstarters and things like that fail because they don't understand the business. Well, and I think, you know, the, obviously we're talking about video games right now, but this, I think, transcends I don't think I know for a fact this transcends well beyond the video game market, Brian. And, the, uh, you know, unfortunately, this is kind of what it's like. This is you know, yeah. this is small business. This is this is entrepreneurism. You're, you're kind of you're yep. kind of you're seeing it here. And I and, it, and to make this work, you have to dedicate. I mean, you have to say I am dedicating this full time because you're not going to develop a game like this 
part time. It's just it's not going to happen. That's why they're not producing. That's why they haven't been putting out patches. Because you can't do it part time. It just takes too much time to do all this. So yeah, I I feel for them because I've I've worked in small business. I've mm-hmm. you know I've been an integral part in small business. And I understand the struggles of, of, of small business, like less than five employees, small business. I get it, yeah. but I don't have any sympathy. I mean, this yeah. is just, this is, this is the name of the game. You gotta, you gotta play yeah. ball or get out. And uh, you know, I, while I don't, again, I don't want to sound like a dick, but th- this is, <laughs> this is what you, this is what you sign up for. This is the industry. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, hopefully you know things like this thank you jones it, it it does it does suck for them but uh, you know this is definitely a wake up call and hopefully this makes them a stronger company going forward because they've realized it takes serious work and you have to sell you have to sell quite a few copies um on on kickstarter or whatever to be able to meet funding um it's it's very 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 difficult to do and once in a while, we see some of the ones get lucky and somehow that spark happens, you know, mm-hmm. and, and they get a lot more sales. Than Dead Matter, for instance, gets more sales than they anticipated. But the majority of them barely make funding. And usually they underestimate what their funding is. Uh, that's just the average. So, yeah. Unfortunate, not surprising, and hopefully a, a tale of um, caution to people that, Say, oh, I, I can develop a video game. Yeah, you can, but just be prepared for. And Brian, you know this probably better than anybody listening to this program right now. Be prepared mm-hmm. for what it is. It's a huge pain yeah. in the ass, and, and in all likelihood, I mean, just to, to be perfectly straightforward with everybody, like because I remember I discussed making a game, and then I realized there's no way I will commit the time. I can commit the time, especially. I mean, you know, I don't talk about on this podcast very often, but. Uh, you know, I went through a divorce about a year ago and I was just like, there's no way, there's no well, way I can commit the time while working full time to and be not, able to not, do that. And not getting paid. To and do not it. getting paid. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it'd be something to where I'd be working for free uh, and, you know, for until, until a long way into the project. And it's just, I had to make a decision and it says rather well, you than wouldn't me, have had time. You know, yeah. And then it said, rather than me pushing it forward and pretending like I was going to be able to do it and ending up like a lot of these other projects. I just said, I'm going to put it on hold till I'm in a time in my life when it makes sense. Yeah. Cause I still, I enjoy it. I enjoy game development. Um, but I realized the amount of commitment it takes. And if I can't give it, I'm not going to start it. Yeah. And that's just the way it works. So I, uh, you know, w- wish them, wish them luck, but you know, don't, you're not going to get, you're not going to get tears from me about it. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry to sound like a cold, ruthless SOB, but it's you're not going to get it here. Sorry. So, um, do you have a preference on? I mean, we've got a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, let's talk about. Um, let's see, we're about forty minutes in. Let's 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 talk about Fortnite, Brian. Okay. Um, Fortnite, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to play any of the sound from the video because it's laden with with music, um, and it'll get us a copyright strike. But Fortnite decided that on July fourth. Um, they were going to do another in-game event, which yes. we've seen in the past. And for the most mm-hmm. part, actually, you know, they, they do a pretty damn good job with these, um, with these events. They, they, they do, they do a really good yeah. job. So, uh, it was, you know, it was interesting to see what they were going to do. Unfortunately, Brian, they have taken the approach that so many others have taken and have turned video games into yet again, another, political platform for a company like Epic um, to shove their political agenda down your and my throat. Um, They took 4th of July, July 4th to have a presentation in game, like one of their, like an in-game concert, like they did in the past with a big projector screen in which they invited Van Jones, um, isn't he a CNN commenter? Yeah, he's or, a CNN know, commentator. CNN um, Jamel Hill, the the uh, failed sports host from CNN, and self. Wasn't she also? Wasn't she also on the Obama campaign? If I remember correctly, I'm not sure about Jamel Hill. Um, I think she was a, a hip hop artist, little baby, um, a, some a guy named Killer Mike, who I don't know who that is. 
And then, so, okay, so um, Killer Killer Mike, um, Killer Mike was somebody who, with all the stuff that happened, you know, with the original uh, Floyd situation, oh, okay. came out and told people to, you know, get active, quit, get, get, quit being violent on the streets. If you want to get active, get active politically, get active, you know, get other, get active other ways. Gotcha. Quit rioting, quit doing all this stuff. So that he's that kind of brought him into the uh, the forefront with all that. And then Elaine, well. Well, well, Welter Roth, I think is is her last name. So they had this event. It was called it was called We the People, Brian. Um, mm -hmm. I think I made this clear last week, and I'll make it more clear this week. I don't want to see politics in video games. I don't care regardless if of it's, what, and that's thing, regardless of his politics. I agree with or I disagree with. I, I don't want to picture a Trump. I don't want a picture of Obama. I, unless I'm playing a political video game, I don't want to see it. And to me, it, inviting Jamel, uh, Jamel Hill and Van Jones, who have made incredibly racist comments in the past, like Jam you can go back and look at Jamel Hill's tweets about what she thinks about white people, inviting her onto a platform that a bunch of children play and use, Yeah. to me is the most gaslighting, virtue-signaling horse shit I think I've ever seen, Brian. And yeah. it beyond pisses me off that this is the state of things. Yeah. If well, Epic it, really I mean, kind of gave a, strange... a flying fuck about black yeah. lives or we the people, why doesn't Tim Sweeney hop off his fat ass and donate some of his goddamn money to a cause instead of being a virtue-signaling piece of shit and putting this stuff in his video game? Plain and simple. If, if, if Tim Sweeney and Epic really care, then why don't you do something besides pandering to people with this stupid bullshit in game? How much money did Epic make last year on Fortnite, Brian? Oh, I'm, I don't know. I don't know how many millions to billion. I, mean, Epic, I could look it up, but... Epic Games made $3 billion in 2018. Three yeah. billion dollars profit. That was three billion dollars of profit after they had paid staff, servers, the whole shebang. Three billion dollars. Yeah. And their activism <laughs> is some virtue yeah. signaling 45 minute video and game. A company that has got so much money that they could do whatever they want. This is how they go about it. It's ridiculous. So, so I wanted to showcase something really quick. Um, I went on to PC Gamer and I found two different articles, and I just wanted to kind of show the hypocrisy here really quick. Uh, if you could pull up the one on Roblox really quick, <laughs> sure. Uh, so, people, first of all, there's this article. If you could pull up the page too, because I, I want to show the subtext here. Sure. Okay. So, uh, you know, hacked Roblox accounts are telling people to vote for Trump. <laughs> Uh, and and read right below that. Do you see that the, their comment? Yes, a, as a, ten their year sarcastic olds, remark. Ten year olds are the key demographic, which I would agree. For uh, Roblox has got a very young age demographic. That's who it's marketed towards. Yeah, but they're saying ten year olds are a key demographic as a sarcastic joke. Of, yes, you know, of why course. are they why are they pushing politics to ten year olds? Can you now pull up the next article from the same group? Sure. Uh, and this is and, about and let's this see is what about they Fortnite. say. This is about Fortnite. Who I would say their age demographic is nine to twelve, maybe fourteen. Right? Now it's it's probably a little bit older. It's probably sixteen. It's I not mean, voting age. Okay, it's sixteen, but it's still not voting age. Correct. Uh, and so here you can see, oh, they're all about it here. You Fortnite, know, we're gonna for feature Fortnite. former Teen Vogue, uh, you know, person and uh, you know, hip hop artists. They're, they're this is great. There's no well, why are they doing this in a game that's aimed towards kids? That subtext was not there. It's the exact same thing though. Well, let's see. If I you do know. control F for the word kids, you can hear the sound, my window sound, Brian, of the word kids not coming up in this at all. I don't believe it no. mentions anything about age. It, in fact, does not. Um, hmm. Now, that's so, uh, the, the tales of the two tapes. So I thought that was interesting. It was just a little bit of hypocrisy but for a little PC bit. Gamer to, to be saying, you know, why to say, why are they promoting Trump? To kids, yet they're promoting um, all of this to kids. When uh, you know, uh, parents, I would suspect there's many parents that if they when they let their kids play video games like this, 
They don't want them subjected to politics. They don't want them, you know, there's plenty of parents out there who probably don't let their kids watch the news because they don't want them worrying about all these things. Kids need to be able to, as Daddy English is saying, let them play. You know, let let kids play and not have not have to worry about all the stuff happening on the streets. You know, that shouldn't be, these are adults having issues, not the kids. Let the kids not have to deal with it. Yeah, I'll just remind you that on election night in 2016, Van Jones said the reason that Donald Trump got elected is because white people were pissed that Obama was president for eight years. He called it, quote, a white lash, as if white people were whipping the former black president of the United States. That, that, those are his words. So to yeah. me, if I was a parent, I don't think I'd necessarily want somebody like that headlining my panel. And yeah. again, this is not coming from a company that can't do things. This is from a company that in 2018 profited three billion effing dollars. Yeah. Why doesn't now, Tim one Sweeney thing put I've, his money where his mouth is? Plain and one simple. One thing that is interesting, I don't know if you saw this, is there was a tomato vent vending machine which would distribute unlimited tomatoes right next to the screen. And people were very pissed that ha most of the people, 90% of the people were throwing tomatoes at the screen the whole time. And people were like, this is so disrespectful. And they were angry. Uh, but that's what was happening is all these people were throwing tomatoes at the screen most of the time. And then you have the few people that are pissed, say, you know, just mad that it happened. Uh, so well, that, yeah, so that, that happened in Fortnite. Well, well, and they played it all day, 4th of July. And you know what I find very interesting? is going through some of the YouTube comments on this, Brian. Now, anytime you go to Reddit, you go to YouTube, you go to any of these platforms, most of the time, the comments tend to sway to the left. That's just how it is. Go, go to, go to yeah. RL on Reddit and see what the top stories are. But the comments on this YouTube video, Brian, are, are very indicative of what you and I are just talking about. I went on this game yeah. to get away from this stuff. Um, yeah. Kids playing Fortnite are like, WTF is this? Such propaganda and victimhood mentality. Um, it, it, it's just, I, I'm not seeing anything in here where it's saying, um, oh, this is so great. It's, it, it, to me, yeah. it's, just, it's people that are having this exact same notion that I'm all for people being politically active. I am incredibly politically active. If you follow me on Twitter, you know and that. I, and personally, I think even on, on both sides of the aisle, one thing that most people don't realize is you know, as this is a pendulum, it's important to have two sides of the issue because it keeps balance. When you have, when you have a pendulum, you know, it goes back and forth. You know, we, we go from here's a Republican, here's a Democrat president, here's a Republican. It kind of swings back and forth when one goes to the extreme. So it's needed. Uh, because you don't want it to be you know, a dictatorship. But there's got to be, I mean, some of these things go beyond the pale with, with how they're dealing with it, which gets really frustrating. Yeah, and, you know, Daddy English says it, not in games, though. Let's keep games as games. And that is exactly the, co the conversation we had last week. That's the conversation we're going to have this week, and this is the conversation we're going to have going forward. I don't want politics in video games i just don't i don't care I well and especially when a lot of the things 24 7 i just don't care especially when it's like we talked about last week with twitch where where they invited people onto their platform that have have, have um promoted literal marxism and and then the same thing that epic did i mean jamel hill and, and Van Jones have made some incredibly racist comments against white people. Yeah. How, why is one that thing, being promoted? One thing, one thing that I saw, I actually reported, I reported my local news station <laughs> for posting an article today uh, where they're having this national blackout day. I don't know if you've heard of this, but they're saying they're encouraging people to only purchase from um, stores owned by black people. Which is the definition I don't of racism, you, by the way. If you don't, I don't know if you remember last week when I, I referred to the term Das Juden. Uh, and this was when I was saying uh, pretty much, you know, they're, they're promoting people saying, don't go, don't, don't do things with white people, you know, only work with people. But that's pretty much the exact same thing as what happened in World War II. That's why I was bringing up that point. And then a week later, they're actually having an event doing exactly what I was saying <laughs> of, don't buy from people that, it, 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 but the thing is, when I went to go report the tweet, you want to know what's interesting? It says, did you encounter racism 
from a non majority, pretty much a non majority. I, I can't, I cannot report racism. I can't report it. I, there's no box for me to be able to go in. Even if a person said that, you know, uh, white males are, are disgusting and, you know, we need to kill them all. I could, I could, I could get away with violence for that, but I couldn't report, report them for racism because they do not allow a white male to report racism on Twitter. I mean, just, just a little point yet. They're, they're going in and saying, we want to have a day where we only purchase products from black people. I just thought that was that that is racism. That is scary. Uh, and it happened uh, back, you know, in the late 30s, early 40s. It's already happened. Uh, and it's scary that we're seeing it happen again. And it's so normalized to where uh, large news organizations are promoting this and not seeing any of the hypocrisy uh, and the fact that this has already happened. They're not seeing any. It doesn't matter who you're racist against. Racism is racism. Anybody that's can true. be racist. If you, yeah, true. If you judge it's anyone or, or, or do anything against someone, that is racism based on their yeah, skin. I mean, yeah, or, I mean, or racism, their religion. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, all it, these things. Yeah, racism is, uh, is, is discrimination on somebody based on, in this case, the color of their skin. So ha whether it be yeah. white or black, it's the definition of If you of say, racism. I'm not going to purchase from this person because of their skin color, that is racism. Yes, even if they're white. Going and saying, I'm only going to purchase <laughs> from this person because of their skin color, that That's is also racism. Racist. Correct. Um, now it and, doesn't and get yet. We, we see it promoted. Uh, and if I just, I always say, if you ever want to know if something is racism, switch the colors, switch the religion, switch it, whatever, put the polar opposite, whatever in your mind, the polar opposite is flip that. That's yeah. if, if you can't say it, <laughs> then it's racist, right? Um, it doesn't matter who you're saying it against. It's still racism. Yeah. So, and, um, and, 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 here it is yet again. It's just a, a video game company that has the opportunity to go out and actually do things, and they're not. Instead, yeah. they are pandering. They are filling up a game. I'm glad I don't play the game, um, but they're filling up their game with propaganda that is not relevant to the game. Now, here's the thing. Here's the great thing, Brian. Epic is a private company. They can do whatever the hell they want. I'm not saying that yeah. they should be, you know, uh, uh, Fortnite should, they should get it ripped away from their claws because this, no, absolutely not. They have the absolute right to do this as a, as a, as a private company, even as a public company, they could do it. Well, but I just think as consumers of video games and consumers of products, it, it just gets to a point where we need to slap these developers back and say, stop, I don't care about your politics. I just... Whether it be the politics I agree with or don't agree with, I just don't care. And that's yeah. honest to God, Brian. That's how I feel. And, I, and you and I are some of the most political people you'll find. You and I are both incredibly political. There are certain venues, certain places where I don't want to see it. Restaurants are included in that as well. When I go out to eat, Brian, I'm not going out to eat to do politics. I'm going out to eat. And it's the yeah. same thing with video games. I'm not loading up Fortnite or PUBG, or any other game, or Call of Duty, to be lectured on about racism. I, I, yeah. I just, I'm, it's not my objective, it's not the goal, it's not what I'm trying to accomplish. And I, I really do think that this overreach that these progressive companies are taking is going to have a negative impact, because people are fed up with this bull. They are beyond well, fed up with it. And I think that the part that they don't realize is they're they're upsetting both sides of the aisle with this. Yes, it does because there's. I mean, we have people that are in our chat right now that I know are politically opposite of me because I know them personally. I know that they're political opposite of me, and they are having the exact same issues with this. It, it because I would be upset even if it were something where they were pushing something for the Republican Party. They were pushing something that I could look at and say, "Oh yeah, I agree with most of that." Right? I'd still be frustrated that they're putting because you know what? I know that. Half of the other people that come into that video game aren't going to agree with that. Quit putting pushing it down their throat. Let us get in there and quit trying to raise contention. Well, that's you know, all it is. Get, just get away from this. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, I don't know if you noticed in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, they removed the okay gesture from the game. Uh, one thing I wanted to make note of in this is the whole premise that that was originally founded on was fake. Remember when people were doing the, um, what's the game? It's the a-hole game. <laughs> what's, what's it also called? Where you you do the upside down? Uh, you oh know, oh, the, oh yeah, the, yeah yeah yeah. You put it you put it on your leg. Yeah yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So they were doing that. People were doing that. Uh, and then all of a sudden the news media having no clue about anything, uh, we're like, oh, that's a, that's a racist gesture. That's a racist hand symbol. Uh, and so then it turned out, oh, then if you turn it up, right, you know, and then you do an AOK -okay, now that is, that is the exact same thing. And that's by yeah. white nationalists. These are yeah, racists. Yeah. Very, very, very racist places. symbol. Yeah. yeah very, but, very, but they made, very they made up the whole thing. It was never racist in the first place. The media made it racist. And then people who were probably white nationalists started making the symbol only because the news said it was. It never was. There were no white nationalists actually doing this, this hand signal in the first place. They made it. And then they started doing it. And now they're removing it from video games when all it means is okay. It well, does I, not mean anything racist. But it's funny because if you just do a simple search for Barack Obama okay hand, <laughs> there's picture after picture of him doing that. And yeah, that, yeah. Like that's, well, that's, was, all, that's all you need to that, see. Yeah, of it course, normal this of course means symbol. okay. What else could it possibly it mean? I don't even know. I don't even know what is racist about. I can't. I mean, personally, I have oh, no. You've clue. never seen the the drawing? It's white W and then the power. This is a P. That's that's oh, it. You've okay. never seen that? I've never. Yes, that's no, it. I've never, yes, I've never the Washington Post I mean, did thought, a full description. This is this. It's a it's a W and a P. So that there. Okay. Yes. Well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, there we go. Um. So I never. Yeah. So I, I looked at. It, I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Uh. But now they're banning it out of video games when. It has nothing to do with racism, but they're worried, you know, that it's going to make them look bad. Uh, it, it, when you make a big deal of things, then you turn it into something bad. The Barbra the Streisand AOK symbol was, was never a bad thing in the first place, but people made it bad. You know, these, these news organizations made the problem. If they would have just shut up, it would have never even, it would never be anything. <laughs> it, would, it would have been the AOK -okay symbol that we've had for a hundred years. Yeah, you know, I can't it's, just, it's insanity. I can't believe you've never seen this, Brian. <laughs> 4chan. <laughs> 4chan. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I just, I never, yeah, I never, I never realized that because I, why was it upside down then? I mean, is that M, M, P? I, because it was upside down, right? That, yeah. that was how this all started because remember during the, uh, the Kavanaugh, uh trial the one girl who was like on the staff or whatever did that game like she made that symbol and that kind yes. of sparked this whole thing because like oh kavanaugh that's why we can't put kavanaugh in because his uh you know assistant did the white power symbol behind no she was doing the a-hole game that's what she was doing and they turned it and that's what sparked this whole thing now say oh that's racist no it had nothing to do with it it was a game that kids were playing and you know young people were playing they would try to get into a picture or their friends. If they, they had them see it, they could punch them in the leg or the arm or whatever. It was a stupid kid's game. The news turned it into a racist symbol. The news did. No people, the news. It's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Anyways, this is so off our time. But it, it, what relates it to games <laughs> is they removed it from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That's the only thing that makes this anything related to games. If they could have left it in there, it would have made no difference. It is not a racist symbol. Have you, ever have you ever seen this picture of this, this guy at Universal Studio? The, yeah, he's, the, this guy was playing the the a hole game with kids. You know, he's he's not racist. <laughs> you know, it was a game that people were playing. It was just stupid stuff they were doing. Oh my! You know, God. you'd get you'd sneak into all these people's pictures. You know, and it's like, ah, gotcha. You know, gotcha, a hole. Oh my God! You know, Brian, it is. We laugh about it, but it really is so sad that this has turned in like the entire world has just turned into cancel culture, political correctness. It really is, yeah. I think, very har harmful. Um, yeah. And I don't want to, and I don't want to lament the whole program on it, but frankly, I'm done with it. You're done with it. We're gonna start fighting back against it, and we're gonna use this and platform one, to do. I so. have one thing left with Fortnite that I just want to mention. Okay. Fortnite Fortnite is primarily 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 or owned by a Chinese uh, Tencent. company. Yeah. Tencent is a Chinese company. It is run by a country by the in any companies inside of China are owned by the government pretty much. Uh and so this is something that you have a communist country owning and, and if you go look there is a lot of documentation. China goes through and it's been purchasing a lot of companies. Part of them, they purchase a lot of media companies because they can influence. They're really pushing for communism in, the, in this country. 
And the, this is one way where if you look at the whole BLM movement, as I said, just go research it yourself. Don't take my word for it. Um, you know, you should never listen to one person and form your whole opinion off of one person's opinion. Uh, go out and do your own research. Go find the original facts. Find what what things led to another. And you, you'll start connecting the dots. This company is owned by a communist country. And now all of a sudden they're playing some of these things. So many things are, are pointing towards communism. It's just a weird, it's like a Cold War all over again. You weren't old enough, Nick, to really remember the Cold War no, was, and in the 80s. I wasn't I mean, alive. You, were, <laughs> you weren't alive at the time. <laughs> but um, the thing that you'll see is, you know, that was communism versus uh, capitalism. And I feel like we're, it's weird. 20 years later, we're coming into the exact same thing again. This is communism, communism versus capitalism, yet they're doing a different, more subverted method of doing it. And they're trying to, uh, you know, charade it with this whole, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter movement. When, in fact, if you really cared uh, about Black Lives, when they promoted, you know, when they pushed through a bill to, to reform police, they wouldn't have rejected it. You know, again, um, these, so, because these, it has nothing to do with it. These big companies like Epic have the resources to do things if they wanted to, and they're not. I don't see any stories about Epic's philanthropy, philanthropy into the community or doing things in, by the way, in the state of North Carolina where I live, where they're headquartered. I don't hear anything that they're doing in the state of North Carolina to make a difference. All I see is yeah. political BS being shoved down children's throats in video games. Which is yeah. again not the platform, not the place, not the time. And frankly, Brian, you've got to be able to decide with your wallet. That's what it comes yeah. down to. If you if you don't support it, don't don't financially. Nope. Support and you won't find it. me playing that's, Fortnite. Not that I ever played Fortnite really, but uh, I played it a couple. I play it every once in a while. You won't find me doing that anymore. Yeah, it's not going to do. So, it. so um, and now it was really quickly. I want to thank uh, Tag Durante for thirteen months. So thank you very much. Yep, and we uh, we we skipped our. Um, we skipped our friend uh, Ross Eraser who hit us up as well. He says, my my sub is old enough to drink at 21 months. So uh, thank you to our friend, a big nice. Woody Sauce, Ross Eraser, for uh, hitting us up with the uh, 21 month resubscription here on Twitch. Thank you, gentlemen. We uh, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, there we go. PH says, <laughs> look at these ex Fortnite addicts. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. chilling. All right. <laughs> so I think that's most of the, I think that's all the yeah, politics that I think we so. had in here. And we can go back to video games, but, um, you know, it's just, it is frustrating, but if, as I said, go do your own research. Don't take our, our opinions as gospel, uh, but don't write off our opinions as well. Go doing your own research and, and figure out what reality is, what truth is, uh, because I think you'll find, uh, there are plenty of instances where you're, you're not being presented the truth. Uh, and it's up to you to figure out what reality is because it's not going to be served to you on a platter. So, all right. Um, one thing, let's satisfy. Actually, let's do the game giveaway really quick if you're oh, all right. Oh, yeah. With what that. do we got? Yeah. Um, I want to give away a copy of Boundless. Oh. And okay. this is an open world survival craft sandbox game. Um, and I'll put a link to it. It's currently half off for two days right now. Uh, and so it's $20 pretty much right now. Normally it's $40. But we're going to be giving away a copy of this. Uh, it's it, it, the same. It says the game similar to games you've played, Seven Days to Die and Ark. So it's kind of one of those open world exploration games. But it has mixed recent, but mostly positive overall. And so, but mixed recent just based off 13 reviews. So who knows? Yeah. Cool. Well, it's free. So. Yep. That's exclamation point giveaway in chat. And we'll give that away before the end of the show. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, Let's uh let's talk about um let's talk about Fallout real quick. Um okay. There's a video that I'm that I'm not going to show cuz it doesn't really show anything. Um but uh they Amazon TV, Amazon Prime is going to be doing a Fallout TV series and it's going to be uh made and produced by the same people that did uh, Westworld, which I think you watched. Um, mm -hmm. And from all I've heard about Westworld is it's a very good show. Looks, It's very c cinematically, it's very pleasing. And I think Judd is saying Chernobyl as well, which is a very uh, well made. Yes, very well. Yep, series. Chernobyl is very well made as well. Um, 
I think you and I have commented on this in the past. Video games never seem to make good TV shows and movies. Um, in well, the past, wait, wait. Do, you, do you feel that video games don't make good movies or movies don't make good video games? Video games don't make good we- movies and TV shows. We've seen, there uh, are very few examples. I'm trying to think of, yeah, there's, I mean, there's some horrible, the Mario things. Uh, World Teenage of War. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles wasn't right for kids. World of Warcraft was a yeah, horrible but World, movie. But World of Warcraft wasn't a, World of Warcraft was a TV show before it was a game. I'm saying a no. game that, yes. No, no, uh, World of Warcraft was a game before a movie. No, no TMNT. Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oh, was, was a cartoon. You said World of Warcraft. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. You mean, Teenage, Teenage Mutant was, was a TV show and then turned into a game. Yeah. So also, the, one of the better examples is Resident Evil. Those were all right. Um, mm-hmm. But in general, when they take a video game, a popular video game franchise like Fallout, like World of Warcraft, and try to turn it, uh, Assassin's Creed, try to turn it into a movie or and or a TV work. show, it just tends not to work. I don't know why. Hopefully well, this okay, one's well, different. One, one that did do all right was The Witcher one. And that really yes. did promote a lot of that sales. That show and I was think good. That's what, yes. I think that's what's kind of pushing this, is if you can make it well enough, and you have to pick a game that has a lot of lore. The whole Witcher series has a lot of lore behind it. Fallout has a lot of lore behind it. And so if you can get one that has enough lore to where you're not sitting there trying to make up lore for the movie or for the television show, then I think you have something that works. But the problem is, is when you have a game that's very a basic game, but then they start adding all this stuff to it, you're going to piss people off because they're going to be like, well, that's not the world I envisioned uh, or that's not you know how we thought it was supposed to be. I think with here, they've got enough backstory and enough things going on to where they could make a very good game that would actually promote you know people playing more Fallout. <laughs> well, I, I mean, uh, hopefully no, not, I mean, Fallout not Fallout 76. 76. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe Fallout 3 or Fallout 4. Um, well, and I, I did want to mention Fallout 76 is going to be on the uh, Xbox Game Pass for the PC oh, uh, cool. this in this month. So uh, that'll be an opportunity for me to play it um, and you know try it out and see what I think with the more recent things. But that will be a uh, that will be in the Xbox Game Pass for the PC uh, when that comes out here this month. Yeah. Um, well, so. So that yeah, this is going to be on Amazon Prime, uh, and it should be you know a very high budget because Westworld is high budget, Chernobyl was high budget. This should be a high budget uh, sh- series that they do. Yeah, and you know it. I, I hope it's a. I hope it's a Fallout inspired series. It doesn't necessarily yeah. need to be Fallout the game as a TV show. It doesn't need to be all the stories of the game. I'd rather have exactly. it be another, you know, experience because that's kind of what I want the games to be, anyways. You know, just that's one thing that they've kind of done is you know, here's Fallout, here's the experience in Washington D.C., here's the experience. You know, have have it be experiences around the world, uh, you know, or around the country, you know, from different perspectives. Don't try to remake or reshow some old game where. You know, you're kind of if you've already played the game, you're reliving it through the show. I wouldn't want to have that. I want it to be no, something new. No, use the power armor, use all the, the the features of the game in the story, but don't but create your own story. Exactly. So there you go. Um, yeah, JD says just have it be in the same universe. Exactly. So that's why I'm saying inspired. Um, cool. So there you go. Yeah, they Very- did. They did put out a patch as well. There's a video. Yeah. Um, showing, and this is for the summer updates that they're doing. Uh, it's going to show some of the different things that they're doing this summer in Fallout 76. Soon.
unit is patrolling. Cool video, cool, you know, peppy soundtrack doesn't make me want to play the game at all. And yeah. I, I don't think there is anything that they're ever going to be able to do. I, the last time I tr played it, it was all right. I just, I, I, it, it just didn't, it didn't win, it didn't win me back. It didn't make, it didn't make me want to come back and play more. Plain and simple. Yeah, I think, I think, I think a lot of people are turned off by the real time you know, multiplayer yeah. aspect of it, because that's not what Fallout is in general. Unless they made some sort of a big MMO, you know, like open world where you're kind of doing your own thing, you will interact with people, but having to be where you have to create, you know, teams and it's, and you can't really do progress or, you know, group up with people unless they are certain people are online. It just doesn't seem like the best way to do Fallout. It's too much of a change from the original and kind of breaks too many of the mechanics for me. Yeah. So... I don't know. Well, nevertheless, the TV show is cool. Look forward to that. There, you know, there are some updates that are coming out in their summer updates. So if you are a, a Fallout 76 player, you've got some stuff to look forward to. Um, they're, they are not, yep. uh, they are not uh, moon, uh, moonlighting, sunsetting the, the, the game yet. They're, they're keeping nope. it updated. And, and they have to because it's the how long. I mean, these games take too long to develop. Yeah. And we'll see. I'll play this month when it comes out. I'll play it um once it's out on the xbox game pass see how it is see if it's anything has changed or anything is good because it for me it'll be a fresh perspective other than watching ph stream stream it with incredibly buggy creatures and just everything going wrong the whole time uh you know that's kind of my expectation and we'll see how much above that they are now yeah all right um <clears throat> another thing i wanted to mention satisfactory uh they put out a thing kind of saying how many copies they sold on Steam and Epic. And I just thought oh, people cool. might find it interesting because generally yeah. you don't see all these numbers. And they said they sold, uh, at the point of, I think, this article, they sold 1,326,518 uh, 1, copies of the game. 958,917 of those were on the Epic Game Store. And 367,601 were on Steam. Um, in about three months, uh, Epic sold about half a million copies, and and the total number sold on Steam in a month was three hundred sixty thousand. So most likely, Steam copies will overtake the Epic copies. You know, by the time you hit the three month mark, but that's pretty much where they're at. Um, and so they have a video and everything kind of showing it. But but those are the numbers. The argument I would make, Brian, for a small studio being able to sell almost a million copies on Epic with their far less, uh, you know, the, yeah. the, a, a far less higher of a tax on they probably the sale made more of the game. From that Epic. Well, and I would, and at the beginning of the game is when I think they would want that to be coming in as, as rapidly as possible. So yeah. even though they probably could have sold double, maybe even triple the amount of copies on steam in that same time period. Um, I, wonder if it being on epic them being of course exclusive with epic and epic taking a far less you know substantial cut actually yeah. works out for the best i don't know i don't know if we'll ever know but it's obviously part of the equation here that developers including the people over at satisfactory are making before you know when they're signing these contracts yeah yeah and so and also a uh, ph is saying the epic numbers include their exclusivity purchase but I mean, they made on Epic. I think they they probably got a chunk of cash to go exclusive. So that was initial funding guaranteeing that they would make money in the first place, uh, and then you know then all the sales on top of it a lower fee. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's those are the, the numbers. We'll have a link to the article if you want to read or watch the video that they put out uh, discussing a little bit more. But uh, I have been I have played the game a bit. We do have some people in our Discord that have been playing it. 
And uh, so if you're interested in playing this game with a group, uh, make sure you go jump on Discord and see if anybody's up for, for creating a session. All right. So, all right. Um, and then also I wanted to mention, I had mentioned GOG Galaxy last week, and yeah. there was a escalation of privileges uh, bug pretty much in, in there that they have patched. So I uh, just figured I would mention it since we were discussing that. Uh, now, this is you seeing it after the fact, uh, you know, after it's been fixed. But these are kind of some of the dangers that you have with software that's newly being developed is, you know, these kind of bugs come up, they get patched. Uh, and so that is something to keep in mind. If you aren't updating your version, it should automatically update, but make sure you're running the most recent version because the 2.0.17 version of it uh, does have this vulnerability. Gotcha. Cool. Well, yeah, make sure you're always keep your software up to date, Brian. Yes. Um, and I, yeah, I think well, I'm seeing that I'm on that version. That may be the current, the version that's current. I'll, I'll double check, but yeah. You might be vulnerable. Um, I may be vulnerable, so Ooh. I need to make sure it updates. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then also, uh, there was an article here taught discussing prices of console games. Yeah. And it was talking about the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. And it says a lot of publishers are considering raising game prices for those consoles because they said that the cost of development has increased between 200% and 300% while games prices have remained flat. Uh, now, I'm not sure you know, what it is that exactly would make these things cost so much more. Well, uh, you know, because there's... Yeah, um, but but what, what I mean, there's there's they're, they're treating it more like a cost of doing yeah, but, business. Well, and I, well, of course, I mean, you have inflation, but the problem that I have with this argument, Brian, is fine. You want to charge fifty nine? Excuse me, you want to charge sixty nine instead of fifty nine for a game? Fine. Then get rid of the damn microtransactions because every yeah. single game that is selling for fifty nine ninety nine is still selling you a season pass, a DLC this, a, 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 a roadmap that, a, a DLC pack, a map, a gun, a skin. They're all still selling other things on top of it, which weren't things that were possible in the past. So, yeah. yes, the base price of your $59 a month, a $59 a one-time game has not gone up, but you're able to sell a bunch of other crap that you weren't into, weren't able to do in the past. Yeah, because they're complaining since 2005. If you look at the game market in 2005 that, versus the that, game market now, ridiculous. in 2005 they didn't have all these microtransactions. Bingo, they didn't have all these. Laga. You would sell a game once, and then that would be it. I mean, you would sell it. You'd maybe put out a patch or two, right? Uh, and that would be that would be it. You sell the game. And nowadays they have all these other things with with. Um, you know, microtransactions and season passes and everything else. They have a lot of other ways. Uh, you know, look at, I mean, they're selling, look at what they did with Fallout. I mean, Fallout 76, where they were selling a gold thing or whatever it was that would give you access to host your own server. Uh, then they had a season pass, a whole another thing that they've charged. And the, and the first, the gold one was, that was a hundred bucks, wasn't it? Like a hundred dollars yeah. for that ability. I mean, you can't tell me, there, people are willing to spend money on games. Uh, but, you know I, what I would want to see is if I pay sixty nine ninety nine for a game, as you said, I don't want any microtransactions. I want to purchase the game and have that be it. For me nowadays, purchasing a game for sixty nine ninety nine, that is my expectation is that I get a full game, that I'm not then microtransaction for additional things. If I want to pay fifteen dollars for a game, I can understand that there'd be microtransactions in it. Yeah. Uh, or if it's free to play game, throw microtransactions in there. But you know what's sad is that now we're in an age when sixty nine ninety nine games are then jam packed with microtransactions and all these other things that you can purchase, where they expect you to pay a hundred and something plus dollars for the game. You know is what they're hoping for people to do, and I just I don't complain to me that the cost of development has raised when you're getting trying to milk people out of a hundred dollars plus for your video game. Yeah, I, 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 I'm all for people trying to make money, but don't give me this nonsense that oh, you're 
only, we haven't raised the we haven't made any more money on a video game since 2005. That is a load of crap. <laughs> Because literally every well, and game the number of people, has got some system. The number of people are purchasing your games has gone up dramatically since 2005. The number of sales is way different than it was in 2005. And so your 200 to 300% increase of doing business that you're claiming, well, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you have more than 200 to 300% more sales than you did back I, in 2005. I would make the argument, Brian, it's a whole hell of a lot easier now to produce a game than it was in 2005. I mean, you, you look yeah. at game 2005, you were making game for what? The PlayStation 2? You yeah. didn't just fire up a program on your computer and build a game like you can now. You yep. had to invest in proprietary hardware. You had to get, it, get a deal with Sony to get a development unit to build, to build your game. Yep. And then, I mean, and then look at, I mean, look at Fortnite. Uh, it, you were, how many billion did you say they made profit? Three I mean, it was billion. Three billion. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I would just, I would, Take it that if you do a good job of making your game, you're going to sell a ton of copies and you will make money uh, because that's a free to play game. They, they've got a season pass in there and they're making $3 billion in profit. Yeah. You know, I, it's all um, about how you do it. It's not about the market, you know, costing more. If you make a good game, people will buy it and you'll make plenty of money. I think the problem is there's a lot of games that are crap now uh, and they're like, oh, we can't make money in our game. Well, those are games that would have never made it in the past. You know, people would have just said, I'm not going to play this game. PH uh, posted an article from May from, uh, from Reuters that um, analysts are predicting that in the year 2020, gaming revenue, now that's gaming revenue, so that's the whole sphere of gaming, but gaming revenue- Mobile, everything. Yeah, will um, generate $159.3 billion. That would be a 9.3% year-over-year growth to, of course, 20. Uh, you know, 2019. Um, so I'll tell you what though, Brian, this is not a good idea because NBA 2K21 already said that game is going to be $70. I think these games and these developers are entering very dangerous territory. Um, yeah. Especially with, we're not really sure what the economic impacts of the, you know, the, the coronavirus is going to have leading into when these next generation consoles are coming out near Christmas, yeah. um, I think any company is naive to believe that people are going to be willing to spend seventy dollars, especially for a sports game, which I've always made the argument jam packed with microtransactions. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, packs and 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 all this stuff. I play I've played games like FIFA and, and games like NBA where you buy packs and unlock players. Uh, it's it's a joke. Yep. So make the game for fifteen dollars, but seventy damn dollars, sixty nine nine nine. After you're already gonna spend, God knows what five hundred plus dollars on the next generation yeah. console, Brian. Fifty nine ninety nine. I think in a lot of cases was too much, but seventy dollars yeah. is is over the over the the thing, and all it's really gonna do is draw people to PC gaming more because you can get yeah. games on sale more regularly. And I mean, I, uh, one of my coworkers was like, yeah, I bought nine new games over, you know, on the, on the steam summer sale for like $29. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I bought like nine new games. That's great. Well, one, one is P, PH brings up, he says CD project, which CD project red, you know, makes the Witcher series, um, and is doing cyberpunk. They have become Europe's most valuable video game company with a market capitalization of 8.13 billion dollars good for and he them. points out that's a company without loot boxes nope no game passes uh and they produce one game every five years yeah but the thing is as jody jolori points out one great game every five years and i think it comes down to so many of these companies that are just pu pumping out junk especially with these sports games where year after year they're just pumping out another game maybe with this you know a little bit better graphics each year uh, you know, of course, they have the modern lineup of players for that year, but really, it's not that different of a game from year to year. You know, over time, over ten year period, sure, it's drastically different, but you're they're wanting you to pay sixty dollars every year because they put out a new one every year, and they're not really that different. Oh. And so, I think that's the frustration. Well, I okay, so I would make the argument though. Every year, they're they're selling their game for the going price of a AAA title, which is fifty nine ninety nine. Yes. Which I believe is a little bit too much, but that's the that's the market price. That's what 
mm-hmm. is the gold standard for a finished game like NBA, like Forza, like a Call of Duty, like a Battlefield, whatever. That's the going price. I just don't see how the, you know, prior to like 2000 or you know, prior to like the PlayStation 2 games are what, twenty nine ninety nine, maybe thirty nine ninety yep. nine. And that, that was a lot, uh, but yep. I think I mean I, you look at you look at the the average income Brian across the United States, uh, the, you know the median income is like forty thousand dollars or something like that. Thirty or forty in seventy dollars. How many AAA titles are you going to be able to buy a year? Well, Not and that many. comes down to the thing that we kind of pointed out, I know, a year ago. It was probably a year ago, a little bit more, when we pointed out that people are budgeting. You know, yeah. you can't release AAA titles constantly like they they were for a while uh, because they were having it to where $60 titles were coming out every couple of weeks. And people just aren't going to spend that kind of money. You'll get certain people that will buy a certain game, but it's not like the old days where everybody bought, you know, Call of Duty. Everybody bought this one title because... Now you're having to pick between the 15 to 20 AAA titles that come out in that year. Which one are you going to pick? You know, not everybody's going to spend sixty dollars twenty times. That's a lot of money for, to spend on video games. Uh, and so I think that you know people are now having to pick and choose what they what they pay for, which I think is good because you know it's going to get some of the, the some of the junk gone. You know, because there people are just not buying everything that comes out just because it's a game that came out that's by a big studio. You know, they're picking and choosing. And if you put out a game that's crap, you know what? Then you're not going to make as much money. But I, I think, yeah, with this, we'll just, we'll see. Uh, I, I, if it'll hurt the market, you know, people will be buying certain titles like it Cyberpunk. Will. You know, they'll be buying all the various titles that are kind of the hot ones upcoming. But I think we're going to see some products that just b- make a lot less sales because people aren't willing to spend $60 because they know it's just like Fallout 76. I mean, look at how hard that tanked. That should have been, you know, that that was considered a triple A studio, uh, you know, and they put all this money into it, but people just didn't buy it. You know, most people didn't buy it. Yeah, I um, I'm 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 not sure where this idea is coming from, but it doesn't seem like a good one to me. Yeah. So well, and hopefully, hopefully, if you know, if anything, uh, um, a because I don't think they're making less money. You know, they're saying the cost of doing business, but I don't think they're making less money. They can't be. I, I, or if they're, I, I, they can't not be. For, I find not that, from 2005. No, I find that impossible to believe. So I, I, yeah, that's where I think they're kind of just grasping at straws and trying to justify raising the price again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, all right. Now, was, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was going to mention maybe we should talk about loot boxes since we're kind of on that topic. Sure. Uh, because the UK, the Lords, uh, which you know has something to do with the Lords of the Gambling Committee, <laughs> the House of Lords, uh, they're calling for immediate gambling regulation on loot boxes. This is something we mentioned a couple weeks ago oh. or a, a couple months ago, talking about um, how they're going to start taking seriously uh, loot boxes in the UK. And this is something that is now being pushed forward to where uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do seriously regulate loot boxes in the UK because that's going to force the hand on some of these issues that we're discussing a second ago of, all right, you want to charge $60 and then you want to do all these loot boxes? Well, if they make loot boxes illegal, these studios are going to have to figure out how to make a living and sell enough copies based on the game itself and the original selling price and not all the things that they can, you know, the loot boxes they can put into it. Or we'll just start seeing like they do in other places, a flat priced uh, version of like a season pass or a flat price version of you know buying skins straight out. I think that that would be the more common sense way to, to go forward with this. You know, they're not going to get rid of all these things totally, but not have it be where it's more of a random gambling type of you know thing spinning and oh this is the skin you happen to win or this is the item you won. I, I think we're going to see them probably pushing away from that uh, from the randomized awards. Yeah. Well, uh, so, I think we've nothing seen, big, uh, but yeah, we've seen uh, we'll see that. Uh, We'll see this continuing. It's going to start here. It will. It will. Uh, it will transition into other uh, other places as well. Other areas. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, did you have a something else you wanted to discuss? I did. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about Dead Matter here. Uh, let's talk about Dead Matter here for a couple of minutes. They've got a new update. They are pumping these updates out, and hopefully, we'll have an up uh, a video update in the next couple of weeks. But we've got their July third update here. 
Um, yeah. and they, um, are still, uh, they're still working on some roadblocks that are stopping the release to the close alpha. However, they're saying things are working well and, and, and they're, they're pushing forward with that. So one of the things that they've worked on here, Brian is, um, code pass for the ATV, um, which you can see yeah. how that thing kind of looks here. Um, getting at how it operates on the terrain and you know how it flips over and, and things like that so that, that's yeah cool. the physics of that is kind of a pain to do well <laughs> to make it actually feel realistic is something that takes a lot of work so you can tell they're working through that because you can see there's a lot of very unrealistic movements at the mo moment of it going over certain bounces and just bouncing in those very odd ways Yep, so that's cool. They've also done some work on uh, on the on the campfires, which I think we talked about last week, and how how you light those up. I think we uh, referenced the uh, the way that the smoke looks uh, last week, and I think they're going to show that in a demo here. Yeah, the smoke smoke looks really cool, uh, you know, in uh, like a dawn or dusk uh, time frame. So that's that's pretty neat. Um, the safe areas, which we talked about, there's going to be a couple of those throughout the map. Um, there, where you're going to be able to, you know, it's it's a safe area. Uh, so there'll be traders and things like that in those safe areas. Um, other than that, there's a bunch of screenshots of some <clears throat> what they're calling not so safe areas. So some sort of car wash uh, here, a uh, little go kart track, um, a diner that looks like it was at some point some sort of medical compound, um, but has since uh, taken over. And then another thing that they've got here is uh, their their gunshot trails. Um, so you can see uh, what you can see the trails of the gunshots. Um, and you can see in this they're having a like a, they're having a red line uh, drawn on it when they shoot, um, so you can you can see the actual trail of the of of the gunshot, which is kind of cool. Nice. So uh, between that, that's I'll put, and I'll put a link to that video in the show notes as well if people want to check that out. Yeah. Um, so that that's pretty much the update. Not anything crazy, um, but they're uh, they're rocking and rolling, and cool. they've only they've only raised about nine hundred thousand dollars. US and they're going to have a fully yeah. fledged closed alpha. Chronicles of Valyria yeah. raised eight million dollars and said COVID nineteen made it so we couldn't continue development of our game. And that was in like the first week or two of COVID. <laughs> I know it was, it was within the first. It was within the first two weeks. They said, "Oh, COVID has made it to where we can't complete <laughs> development." Yeah, yeah. you could have uh, taken a two week vacation in the time, but somehow yeah. magically that that killed so. the seven. Point seven million dollars worth of funding. So freaking funny. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> um, <coughs> so there you go. Uh, that's uh, that's dead matter. All right. Um, one thing. Uh, so we've been talking about cyberpunk. I know you're apprehensive about cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful about cyberpunk. Uh, <laughs> hoping it'll be a good game. But they did uh, put out a note this week that they were scrapping one feature that they were planning on having in the game. And that is wall running. Uh, and they said it's something they removed due to design reasons, probably because, you know, doing level design, it's hard to account for people running along walls. It's hard to keep them maybe in certain areas uh, when they have enough freedom to run up walls and jump into weird places. And that's where you see all these glitch videos of people doing things they're not supposed to do. Uh, but they said for uh, design reasons, but there's still going to be a lot of flexibility in how you move. Uh, that's for sure. So... And then the article go kind of goes through some other things that they think are cool, um, you know. Of course, they got to make comment about the genital genital customization, you know, that everybody likes. Jesus. So, um, but yeah, so that is that is something that is changing. I don't think it's really going to change too much, you know, of how the game works. I, it may have been a cool feature, but if it if it just causes the game to feel buggy and not feel as nice, sure, remove it. I just I don't know what wall running would have played into the game as far as design you know or making you know the quests or something but it wasn't something i guess they needed so and i'm sure they could come up with other ways for you to get up on the platforms and do other things without wall ring yeah and, and as ph points out it wasn't in any of the trailers i don't think anybody really knew about it, it may have been in their list of original features but i don't think anyone was picking up this game because they wanted wall running no but i will say and if this makes me the Debbie Downer, that's fine, Brian. It's it, it it's mm -hmm. it, it, sh it. I think it shows a trend. That's all. Yeah. Well, that's all. and that it, the trend the trends are usually, uh, you know, when they say, oh, we, oh kind of like what we saw with Chronicles of Lyria. Oh, we're gonna have this in it. We're gonna have this, 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 this. Uh, then it comes down to it. Oh, well, that takes a lot to implement that, or that's a lot of work. <laughs> it's like okay, 
let's uh let's let's back that off yeah it's not the feature it's the trend in my opinion yeah yeah and we'll see it'll be interesting to see if if over the coming months we see more announcements of oh that's not going to have this feature oh it's not going to have this feature uh, i hope you know wrong. keep an eye out for that i really hope that doesn't happen but yeah i hope i hope that it's as close to you know the features that have been listed i hope that's as as full and complete as possible because i yeah. want this game to be successful i think it just be an awesome game that would move the the PC gaming market, you know, console market forward uh, if they can get it finished and put out at the scale that I'm hoping it is. So yes, sir. we will find out. All right, Coolio. All right, so uh, PUBG, uh, mm -hmm. there was a ban announcement. So there was uh -oh. two professional competitive players that were banned uh, because they were using an in-game feature to draw swastikas on the map. Oh, jeez. And so, really? And they were streaming they, they were streaming this on Twitch. Huh. And so uh why would you do that if streamed. you're streaming on Twitch? Okay, well, they weren't streaming on Twitch. A team member was streaming on Twitch. Ah. And the who was not involved doing it, but his camera <laughs> angle caught the uh, what they were doing, got noticed. Um and you know, he when he noticed it, he went and started removing the pieces so that it wasn't there anymore. But uh, the two players could see it, and so they were banned, and they're getting a 30-day ban. So hmm. that is that is PUBG news. So other than that, there wasn't any other PUBG news. Just I just find it very interesting that they would release a public statement about this. Like, is this really yeah, not just do a regular ban? Worthy? I don't know. Uh, I guess to them it seems like a big deal, but um, I just looked at this one guy, this Ponage guy. If it's the same mm -hmm. guy, he's got 1,900 followers on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I think, so he's I not think really have, a big streamer. I think we have more than that. It's, that's not... Yeah, no, sorry. We have 1,500. <laughs> like, they wouldn't make mm -hmm. enough... They wouldn't put a post out that Brian and Nick got banned from PUBG for things they said on the podcast. It's not like you're talking about Shroud or Ninja. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of the odd thing. It seems like they're more of trying to say, "Hey, look at us! We are uh, combating racism. <laughs> we banned Jeez two people, Louise. so right, well, in a private match. So there they go. Doesn't seem to be the. Uh... Oh well, you know what it is? It's because they're professional PUBG players. So that means they have a contract with. So they, PUBG. but did sense. they lose their contract? Well, no, they've been banned just... from work essentially for thirty days. That for thirty sense. days, okay. but are they going to have? Are they going to be? I mean, I just see a ban. I don't see that they've been removed from competitive no, player. Sure, so, that, I mean, they sure won't be able to compete for 30 days. Yeah. Either it doesn't the, seem either, like a huge punishment, but. Either way, I don't think that this is necessary of a an update on their blog. A press release. Yes, literally a press release. Yeah, and I'll, I'll pass on that. But what do I All know? right. Uh, well, yeah. We, let's move I'm on to uh, some Conan. Screen. We're a podcaster. We, we yeah, just a bunch of stupid podcasters. We don't know anything. Uh, so Conan Exiles is re is adding something back into the game. Uh, the avatars and the stuff. Remember they removed those avatars, the big you know, mm -hmm. guys that would walk around and destroy big, do like big oh. area damage and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then also Summer Decay settings. Uh, so they're adding those back in on PC. So uh, they're looking to now on the July 2nd, they should have done the avatars on all PC official servers. And then they're going to be doubling the decay timers on all official servers for the summer. And so that should have started on uh, July 2nd as well. Uh, and they're doing it to where decay timers will be doubled to 14 days. Cool. So that is happening. So if you're playing on there, you should notice that you have like Ymir, as Y-M-I-R, Ymir, uh, Mitra, Dirk, Keto, and all these guys. So they should have all those uh, avatars that you can then because yeah. I, I never really saw videos of people using that. Yeah, I, mean, I think it was causing issues. So hopefully they got them all fixed to where they work correctly now. Yeah, they pulled a they pulled a, a, an old H one Z one. Yeah, oh, it doesn't work right. Okay, delete. Mm. <laughs> uh, and then they also did a they did a patch. This is the one seven twenty twenty patch, mm. uh, and mainly, so we're this this hot fix takes care of a number of crashes uh, related to connectivity issues. A fix for excessive pong messages in server logs, as well as improved messaging in regards to FLS errors. So just mainly a stability patch. Now, I would assume live. 
I would assume Pong messages and server logs are when it's doing an internal ping or something and it's responding. Yeah, it's the response. Yeah, yeah, the ping yeah. Is, is the query. Pong is the response. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, and I guess if you're trying to dig through your server logs and it's just a waterfall pong, pong, of pong, 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 you get <laughs> yeah, to be yeah. a pain, yeah. Well, it's useless. I mean, you end up scrubbing through files and you just can't find anything. So that's yep. that, yeah, that's interesting. Cool. cool. So that's a hot fix. It's out. It's a PC hot fix, by the way. Yes. Uh, and then Arc put out three patches this week. And okay. they're fairly small, just a bunch of little things. But they uh, they fixed on July 1st, they fixed some exploits related to ranged wep weapons and guns. And then in 3.12.27, this is July 2nd, they fixed multiple level design issues related to holes, volumes, floating foliage, and more. They fixed a number of exploits related to Genesis mission weapons. And they fixed a bug that allowed you to purchase unopened loot crates. And then 3.12.29, this was released on the 5th. They fixed a shooting desync de exploit, and they fixed multiple server crashes. So that gets you current to 3.12.29. Yes, sir. Um... Let's talk about uh, let's talk about seven days here. Um, there is a a huge uh, Google spreadsheet here, Brian, or not a Google spreadsheet, a Google Doc of a a nineteen experimental known issues. It is eight pages long, um, and it covers all sorts of categories from audio to animations, blocks, GUIs, items and tools, localization, multiplayer. Uh, perk buffs, point of interest. It is just a laundry list of issues. So the link for this will be in our show notes, infectionpodcast.com. And they're saying, if you notice an issue, you know, make sure it's not in this first before you submit an error report. So they've got, they've got their yeah. active list of, of, you know, they're working on this active list of issues. Um, and, and working. I put a link to the spreadsheet in, uh, in the Perfect. show notes or to the document. Yeah. So um, this is you know, the the a couple of things that they've changed are uh, they haven't really changed anything yet. They just they changed like three or four things before after the streamer weekend, and then the build that's live right now has been the same build. Um, they haven't pushed out anything for it yet. So they're uh, they're just compiling this laundry list. If you go to their form, that is where you can uh, you can go to um, their website create an account on the form and and submit it that way and by the way they're saying the invisible zombies is not a game issue it's that servers are not updated correctly to build 157 of the latest experimental okay. so the the invisible zombies are a you know your server host is your problem not the game itself yep very good so not unfortunately uh, it, too much to go through but there's a yeah, whole there's, bunch of issues it, the list is pages and pages so yeah. you Eight. I mean, I, I just keep skimming through. I can't see if we the issue that we ran into <laughs> with getting the server to crash. Like, I, there's no way for me to even know if that's on here because there's so many topics. Let's see. Quest. Uh, quests reset or CR. Now, quest this. Don't see it. Quest, 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 quest. Oh, here we go. Quests. Buried supplies ring disappeared. If we're in there. Yeah, I don't see it either. I don't see I don't see anything causing a server crash though. So yeah, interesting. Who knows? Hopefully, hopefully they know about that and actually gets fixed. Yeah, I'm sure they do. So there you go. So uh, link will be in the show notes. Make sure you uh, check out the list before you uh, report an issue. Very good. Um, now, there's one thing I was going to mention just shortly. Rocket League they did do an extension to their season, so their season pass uh, six has been extended. Uh, so if you're playing Rocket League, you should have a little bit more time uh, to be able to complete that season. Uh, maybe finish your you know hundred levels or whatever that they give you. So just a note. Uh, and then Rust, Rust has actually put out a pretty big, uh, pretty big update um, coming up here for their vehicles. And so they did put out a video. Actually, we have two videos. We have a Shadowfrax video, and then one put out by Russ talking about these modular ve vehicles. Do you want to go ahead and play the modular, ve modular vehicle one first? Yes, sir. We'll do that and uh, we'll discuss right after this.
Pretty ridiculous. Yeah, a little ridiculous. Um, they are playing to their base. They know exactly yeah. what they're doing. They know how to make money. Um, they know how to market towards their people. They are not stupid, Brian, at all. No. Now, um, well, rather than kind of going through, because there is a bunch of images, I think we should probably play the uh, Shadow Frax video because he will okay. show off and actually talk. Because that, for people that are listening, that was a video showing off the things. Uh, Shadow Frax really go through and actually describe and discuss some of them. Greetings, survivors and friends. Shadow Frax here with your weekly Rust Roundup, and as this is the big monthly one, we're going to start with a recap of all the stuff that was merged into the main branch. But first, make sure that subscribe button and bell are switched to the correct settings so you never miss out. Hopefully. So, a little history lesson to begin with, and I want you to cast your minds back, if you were around and lucid at the time, to dev blog number 67. And what a memorable dev blog that was. Can you believe it though? It was published five years ago, exactly to the day that I'm uploading this. And it was also a Friday. But the most significant thing is that in this very dev blog, we were first introduced to the concept of modular cars. Incidentally, it was also the launching point for the tier 2 cooking concept, which is sadly still in Concept Limbo. Can't believe they prioritized cars over pies. <sighs> anyway, with this week's patch, modular cars are finally here for everyone to find, fix, and wreck, probably all within the space of five minutes. Hint they don't float. To recap, because I've already spoken many words about them, you'll find cars spawning near roads in a damaged state with a random selection of modules. They come in three chassis sizes, short, medium and long, and about 60 will spawn at a time on a default size map. Things you'll need to get them running are low grade and a full complement of engine parts, and the latter come in three quality tiers. Tier 1 parts can be found in toolboxes at roadside monuments, tier 2 parts can be bought at the bandit camp, more on which in a second, and Tier 3 are on sale at the compound. But the real magic happens when you manage to get one onto a vehicle ramp. Here you can customize your slab with 12 different types of module, which are now craftable, to give it more power, armor, seating, or storage. It's up to you. Also, you can now add locks to prevent access to all the stuff you don't want people to access, and make extra keys for your team so that you never have to be without a named driver. Also, also, they come with central locking as standard for extra security, and this automatically locks when nobody is in the car. What a time to be alive. As mentioned last week, with this patch, the island's road topography should now be smoother, with better junctions, wider side roads, and no more roadside decor actually on roads around intersections. Now it should be on the side of the roads because it's roadside decor. Also, the default map size was increased to 4,500 to allow you to express yourselves properly with your new wheels. Now, although cars will spawn near roads from here on in, something else won't. Yes, now there's no such thing as a free helicopter, and if you see one in the wild, then its owner will likely be hiding in a bush nearby, because you have to buy them now. And you do that here at the Airwolf Vendor at the Bandit Camp. I went into this in some detail last week, so watch that vid for full exposure, link on screen now. Although there has been a change worth mentioning. When I explained the pricing structure, I did tell you the placeholder costings were subject to change, didn't I? Some of you still decided to have a small aneurysm in the comments about it though, but for no real purpose it seems, as the prices were slashed over the last week. Minicopters are now 750 scrap instead of 1500, and transports are 1250 instead of 3000. Better now? A couple of other important changes to note are that minicopter decay has been increased to 8 hours outdoors and 36 hours indoors, which is the same as cars, and in a stunning move, we can now finally push them. A heli vendor has been added to Happis Island too, and more on that shortly. And something you'll notice if you're a customer at Happy Chopper is that this particular vendor has been given the power of conversation and actually believes he's in an RPG. This is important to note, as Helk himself said in this month's dev blog, 
This system will be expanded to include places to buy boats and horses, along with missions and quests. And in a recent interview, he also said, don't be surprised if some more RPG-like elements appear in the game in one of our upcoming monthly patches. So what do you think could slash should happen with this in the future, and what sort of missions would you take on if you could? Leave me a comment down below. Also in this update, safe zones just got safer. The bandit camp is now completely one and a bit bigger than at first with a recently enlarged no-build zone round it to prevent players adding SAMs too closely for one. And safe zone now means safe zone, which means no animals attacking you and no players within the zone actually being able to take damage unless they're marked as hostile. So no sniping them from outside. You can't draw a weapon in a safe zone but you can still walk in with one drawn. Sleepers alter magically die after 20 minutes no matter where they go to sleep, and these rules now apply to the compound too, where you'll also find three recyclers instead of the usual one. If you've been a bad survivor and find yourself marked as hostile, a small icon will now appear in the corner of your screen to tell you this. Plus, in your inventory screen, you'll see the time remaining until it all gets forgotten about and you can be friends again. Oh, and external wood gates and walls have had a visual refresh, which is a big improvement on the previous tiki bar look, I think. In optimization, vehicle input lag was reduced by up to 100 milliseconds in this patch, and this applies to all vehicles, not just cars. Memory usage was freed up by 800 megabytes by making the world space grids only load for the area around your character instead of for the whole map at once. And a very odd discovery was made in that the CPU time spent on Rust's UI could be cut by 66%, or 0.5 milliseconds per frame by turning it off and on again. So that's what happens now when you start the game. Although exactly why it works like that is still a mystery apparently, because Unity. Additionally, there were improvements to tree rendering, LODs and garbage collection allocations. In works in progress now, and a bit of sad news, possibly. Poor old Savas Island, Rust's king of the hill map that's been kicking around since 2015, is going to be retiring from August the 6th this year. But that's not all. Sadly, it was announced that also Happis Island will be suffering the same fate at some point in the future. So it seems non-procedural maps will be solely in the community domain at some point, although I guess it's perfectly possible for these ones to live on as custom maps if someone decides to do so. Apart from that, on the HDRP branch this week there has been much work to saplings and bushes in particular, and conditional roof corners received a lot of commits, although we don't have an exact idea of when they'll be ready. And lastly, there will be a mandatory update on July the 9th at 7 o'clock British Summer Time. No player progress will be lost during this, but uh, I wonder what that could be. Hmm. Hmm, well it was mentioned alongside this image, so I'd imagine this will be the merging of the summer DLC I spoke about recently. At this point we have a fairly good idea of what kind of items we'll see included, such as sunglasses, deck chairs, parasols, inner tubes and a pool, but also, according to the commits, boogie boards, instant cameras and water pistols. These are all fun items of course and won't be pay to win, unless you think wearing sunglasses at night will give you an advantage, or if you're planning to battle a soluble enemy. I guess the real question is, will the water pistol have liquid physics like this? I'll have more info on this DLC next week as soon as something happens, so make sure you're subscribed for when I post about it. I stream on Twitch three times a week, so join me there and stay up to date with all my content and ramblings on Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group. A big thank you to my patrons for their continued support and it would be a privilege to have you join them if you can. I shall catch you all very soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio! Alright, cheerio to our good friend Shadow Frax there, giving us the, uh, the, the down low on... Uh on Rust. No. All the One thing I did want to mention is I actually saw a tweet that he put out showing off the water physics in uh, the water pistol. You know, mm -hmm. they show a water pistol and it has like a, you know, a line that they're working on. So you can see the water inside of it actually roll around as you move the That's gun. That's very so, cool. Brings me back yeah, to the, uh, old, the Brian. Now, I know you're a little bit older than me, Brian, 
But does mm-hmm. that bring you back to the days of when you were a kid and you had the little squirt gun and you, you know, you pull a little orange cap oh, yeah. up and you're <laughs> trying to fill it in the sink and the damn thing is bubbling up? Oh, yeah. And then you got to go, you got to like squeeze it like 15 times initially yep. to get to finally squirting water, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so they'll have that in the game. How that's going to be used. I mean, I don't know if it's actually going to do damage or anything or if it's just a water pistol that you're going to squirt for fun. Who knows? With Rush, you can never quite know exactly what they're going to do because people would run around with squirt guns and just squirt each other for fun in that game so <laughs> yeah very cool we will see um yes, sir. and then so and then finally roe they uh they put out a patch uh this past week and july 2nd and this one is the reboot weapon skin supply box weapon balance changes uh so they went through and just pretty much did a lot of weapons balancing to various weapons in the game and then they put in some new skins for that reboot weapon skin supply box. Um, other than that, there's not really, they, they set the price like 100, 100 E points for opening them. And you cannot get a duplicate reward from the supply boxes and will receive tokens for any reward that they already own. So if you get the same one, uh, then you'll get tokens for, for having received that. So you can open up more boxes. Yes, sir. Um, Zira has got a, a, couple of, a couple of updates here. And um, first off, they've got their Independence Day event that uh, ends Which today. Ended today or ends yep. today? Yeah, yeah. I guess it ends at midnight tonight. Um, they just they had a, a couple of different things. The humanoids will now have a five percent chance of spawning uh, Liberty souvenirs, um, and those souvenirs include the uh, patriotic bandanas and hats, a Statue of Liberty event object to each safe settlement that was in there. They added Independence Day skin crates and added thirteen new patriotic themed items i like these guys that's cool to see a yeah. uh, independence day themed and they're uh aren't they canadian yes so that's even that's even that's even more interesting um actually uh, no hum- i take the back he's he, he's not canadian um oh. he is near australia from uh, uh, new zealand the island out there yes new zealand yes um so the here are a couple of other things on here the humanoids will now be attracted to gunshots um, which is something that wasn't happening in the past. Silencers will eliminate this detection completely. So for the time being, if you put a silencer on a gun, um, you, you're essentially invisible to the humanoids in terms of making sound from gunshots. Uh, firecrackers, when thrown, will attract humanoids uh, to the firecrackers' locations. Um, humanoids attracted to firecrackers will have a lowered sight radius for five seconds. So it's a bit of a a stun and a, and a distraction yeah. maybe to, to get into a building or something like that. Um, the silencers now only reduce damage by 5%. It was 20%. So there was, you probably didn't want to be using quite, one, a, quite now, a bit of a penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's far less. Um, and then of course the silencers will not attract the humanoids. They added firecracker firecrackers to the craftable menu. That's uh, you have to be level two for that. They added gunpowder. They can be found at the vendor and the industrial areas. They added a fuse that can be found at the vendor and the industrial areas, and all of that is so that you can craft the firecracker. Um, the helicopter transporter, they fixed the northern typo on the voting screen. It must have been spelt wrong. Um, buildings, they added medical cabinets to house bathrooms and some kitchens. They added industrial spawn uh, loot locations to the garages, and then a new searchable object, new searchable objects in the garages as well. Loot. They've increased world loot from 1,300 to 2,100, um, which is a huge amount. Originally, it was um, the, you know, the scale was 1,000 to 1,800. So they've jacked that up to 1,300 to 2,100. So there's going to be at and it probably least, has something to do with optimization too, as far as them being able to get the servers to run correctly and everything yeah. still running well as you up the loot that's in the world. Especially now that they. Not only have containers, but also, you know, they have the items that are in the world just laying around. So at a minimum now, there'll be at any point, there'll be at least 300 more loots items in, in, in the game. Items that are, that are could potentially spawn into the game, which is which is really cool. Um, so they got that. Uh, the loot tables they changed, obviously, to add gunpowder and fuses. Uh, and then the vendor, they added gunpowder and fuses and then removed the hammers and the wrench from the vendor. So... Um, that is, uh, that's some of the stuff that they are working on over at Zira as well. One thing as, also is they posted their, their roadmap. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And I think, um, I, have we seen this before? I don't remember if we've, if, if they've published something similar to this, but they've I got remember, their, I don't remember seeing it. Maybe they didn't. There's so many of these, um, you know, they, they've got their 
recently shipped items. They've got their near-term items with their saying that are one to three out. Base building is here. Yes. Um, so hopefully that'll be in the next. And the uh, clan one. system. So uh, that'll be pretty system. good. Um, three to four months. Um, they're working on some different server types of beginner servers. Um, and then they've got their things that they're working out. 40 player servers, helicopter extractions, a crashed satellite event. That's super neat. Uh, Steam workshop support, a ping system. And then, of course, various seasonal and holiday events. So they've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline. One here. thing. Go One thing I wanted to mention, um, first of all, the when they talk about the projectile bullet system, uh, that will drastically change how gunplay works in the game. Uh, it's because it, with, with Unreal and game development, there's two different ways of doing bullets. And one you'll see is like a hit scan method. That's where it just pretty much draws a line. If you hit it, then it says, okay, that's a hit and it'll apply damage you know, to uh -huh. what you shoot. Um, the other one, it actually has an object that's traveling through space. Um, and then, and the, you know, so it, the, like for as far as long distance, if you do a shot, let's say something moves in front of the shot right after you fire, then it will hit it. In a hit scan method, it would not do that because it only does that instant second to say, would this be a hit? Then it applies damage where, you know, other things like, you know, arrows or something that's slow that you can see. Uh, and, you know, you'll, you'll have something fly through the air and you can see it. You know, if it ran into something that was moving, you would expect that. But with this, a bullet would do the exact same thing. If you had a really long shot you were doing, uh, let's say a vehicle was moving sideways, it would have the ability to run into your bullet shot before it hit the target. Just an interesting thing. And it does affect how, when you're shooting at things, you notice a lot of times you see players will actually drag their character. They're kind of sliding to the left when they fire because in hit scam, that gives you an advantage where you won't have that advantage in a bullet uh, projectile system. Yeah. Now, the other thing I see in here, and Brian, we have to send an email to our friend Joshua, radio tower event. I don't know what's going to be there think... for the radio tower, but I'm just saying, if this happens to get back to Joshua, I know two oh. handsome individuals that mm -hmm. have fantastic voices for a potential radio tower event. Well, I'm, I'm, I, we, I mean, I'll, I, I'll discuss it with him and see, uh, see if that's I, something he'd be open to. I, I mean... I mean, I'm yeah. I, don't, I mean, yeah, we're the you know two voices of reason. <laughs> yeah, that's what, sure that's what everybody thinks. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, cool stuff. I'm. It's nice to see this stuff kind of spit out on a page. Um, it's yeah, a little so you bit can more, see what to expect. You can digest it a little bit easier, um, mm -hmm. and you can see you know. And some of these things. For example, they've got a lot of things in one to three months. I would imagine some of the things are going to be bumped back to three to four Probably months. Probably a little out. bit, yeah. Yeah, just because the, the, they're, 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 there's a lot of things in here that they're trying to do in the next yep. one to three months. So, uh, it, but it's nice to see this. It's accountability for them, but it's also accountability for you, the players, to make sure that they, you know, stay on top of what they say they're going to be doing. So, cool stuff yep. from uh, from Zero. The link for their uh, it's a Trello Trello uh, uh, roadmap. Will be in our website. It's in affectionpodcast.com. It'll be in the show notes. Very good. All right. Um, Jaws of Extinction. They put yeah. out a patch uh, this past week. And this one is the 0.2.27.18a patch. Okay. Uh, they went through and made quite a few, like, I don't know, there's a bunch of different sections here. So they got player tweaks that they've done, uh, NPC tweaks that they've done, quest tweaks, item tweaks. Uh, and then as far as new things, they've been working on this player building system. So they pretty much have this player building system version 4.0 that they're working on uh, as far as a snappable base building system. Then they have a big list of uh, environment changes they made, UI changes they made, sound changes, performance, bug fixes. Uh, and then they have a, a list of known issues uh, in the system. I don't, I don't think it's worth going through any particular thing in this other than uh, this is a large list of changes, um, pretty big patch, and it was put out on July 3rd. So uh, one thing they said is prepare yourself for new friendly NPCs with dialogue, trading opportunities, new side quests, and a huge re uh, redesign to the Hanoten uh, safe zone, now fondly known as Backwater Beacon. Uh, additionally, there's new ba uh, building mechanics, improved sound effects, sick performance improvements, uh, and a new Apex Predator bees. Be careful not to get stung. Uh, at least remember to apply some bug repellent first uh, using the new player buff system. And then 
It says they do not recommend, they said would not be advisable to use old saves on this build, uh, delete any of those because of the major changes that they've done. So Yeah, that's, that that's a problem with these single player games, Brian, is you have to constantly be restarting your game. We have to yeah, have especially issue. during the development like this, yeah. because I mean, when they add in building or if they totally revamp a feature, it's very difficult to kind of handle the saves for that. So. Yeah, we happy few had a huge issue with this. Um, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't think that I don't think they've actually ever recovered from it. They they were in pretty bad shape. Um, well, that's cool, yep. but it's a nice to see that they're working on some stuff over there at uh, Jaws of Extinction. All right, let's talk about uh, Dead by Daylight a little bit, but before we uh, talk about this. Uh, patch note that they have out there is an event our friend firebomb tipped us off on uh, between now and july 14th so the next seven days if you log into dead by daylight you'll get because it's their four-year anniversary you're going to get 444,444 uh blood points all you have to do is log in mm-hmm. uh get into the game and you'll have those blood points uh, credited to you'll have those blood points credited did 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 to your account so you can uh, you can get access to those on uh on the game all you have to do is literally launch it so uh okay. well, there you go very and good then, um, um now go and then i was just going to mention uh on this update note which was patch 402 um there's just balancing and bug fixes nothing crazy in here um but if you were having some weird in-game bugs it's probably worth browsing through this list and seeing if they fixed one of your one of your issues there was there's a good there's probably 30 things on here very good nothing game breaking. um now atlas we'd mentioned the last couple of weeks that they're releasing a new map uh and they're yeah. having their season four called the maelstrom so there's a video for this if you want to play that really quick uh it'll show off some of the new features of the map and some of the things that they're changing all right All right, Brian, what did we learn? Well, one thing, first of all, this is a new map, as I mentioned before, Mm -hmm. uh, centralized the Golden Age Islands uh, for a clear path to completing the compass. So a lot of the thing is you'll see the zone is kind of focusing on the center, the center area uh, more. Centralized high density servers to reduce the distance sail time between conflict areas. So you don't have to travel across half the map to go you know, if you want to do PVP, for instance, updated mineral uh, foliage on islands so that it's no longer tied to plant biomes. Uh, they uh, removed most unique discoveries to reduce the grind of getting the max level cap. Uh, the economy balances they did were Army of Dead on Golden Age Islands, gold drop reduced by 62%. Island claims upkeep costs reduced by about 75%. NBC crew upkeep tokens Costs reduced by 84% on land and NPC crew upkeep uh, on sea reduced by about half. The Army of Dead treasure guards has been made significantly easier for lower quality treasure maps. Updated early game XP curves so you don't immediately level. Uh, they moved skill point gains to be more generous in lower levels and level off in later levels. And okay. then the Army of Dead on Golden Age Islands XP rewards was reduced by 60%. And then they have some adjustments they made for custom servers. For instance, you know, islands, new to island types and things they've added to it that you can now put on your own custom maps. Um, And they did remove a lot of islands, uh, the old islands too. Yeah. Now, um, now this, Brian, this is on sale right now for $9.89. It's 67% off. uh, It's normal MSRP is $30. Uh, Firebomb has got a question in chat, and he said, "Do you think this game being free to play would save it?" Um, I don't. 
I don't know even if even as a free to play game if there's enough that separates it from a game. Of course, the 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 big one here is Sea of Thieves, Brian, a triple A yeah. game. I just with real quests, real PvP. Yeah. Um, I, I just you know, I don't. Just... I, you know, we'll we'll cover the player numbers here in you know in a minute, and and they did get a player bump, but. I don't think I still don't think it's going to be enough for for anything long term. I could be wrong, but I, I just yeah. don't. I think this is just the initial new patch bump. I don't think there's anything long term about this. Yeah, and it's going to be come down coming down to can they make it to where the PV experience is seamless? The part of the problem with this is it takes so much to build a ship. You can't just go randomly do PVP for fun because if you sink your your ship, then it turns into a whole ordeal, whole ordeal of. Now I have to do all this stuff to try to recover my ship or a crew member or someone on your clan goes and takes the ship out, gets into PVP, sinks it. And then everyone's stuck with that decision of you just lost our ship that we spent three days building. I just, they've got to figure out how to do PVP without it being so costly to you. Can, can I look at a couple of pics, pic, screenshots on this trailer and, and get your feedback? Sure. So if we watch this trailer a little bit, you can see some of the things going on here. They say more conflict. Look at this conflict right here. There are <laughs> a there are one two three four there there's like maybe ten boats in this and there are two yeah. different factions. No way this is happening, Brian. No way this yeah. is worse than the Ark videos, which are also made by the same group. This is so un it, it completely inaccurate. There yeah. is nothing accurate. But look at this. Look at this. There's no armada of ships all sailing in with the same clan there's no way yeah. this is happening what are they thinking this is a single clan game small groups yeah. look yeah, at this and I there's think a whole that... bunch of horses riding horseback shooting cannonballs at a freaking base and you know what? that they would just get blown up immediately <laughs> like that's that's the thing it's, it's just not realistic now none of the yeah, none of this is realistic look at this crap this is ridiculous when now, one thing I'm thinking that they've added in this, or you know, I assume that that's a hint at it. You saw the damage system to where, look at that right there, where the parts and, and things actually have fragments flying off of them, and they kind yeah. of have a true breaking system. I assume that's because of the newer version of Unreal that they've that implemented cool. that feature. It looks great. yeah, it looks good. But nobody mm -hmm. plays the game like this. That, in my opinion, no. and I could be wrong. We haven't played the game since it came out, really. But well, if they if they revamp the PvP system and make it to where if you go into PvP mode, maybe a special mode, you don't actually permanently lose your ships and turn it into a fun game. You know, in that zone, do that. Like have it to where if you sink your ship, like it'll respawn back. Like you go into a, sp a special zone for PvP, your ship sinks, you're able to rezone back to a starting area and continue PvP. Like do it that way. Have it be timed. Have it be of a certain number of lives. Something to make it to where you can keep playing. But it's too costly to do PvP like what they're showing in those examples. I mean, you're in in a few minutes. You're destroying something that's then going to take you a day and a half to rebuild. And so that's that's kind of the downside of that. I just don't see it. It doesn't feel that way because they made it too costly to be able to do PvP. And so you're not going to have those kind of battles where people are just going in because it's not something that automatically resets yet. I think they're going to yeah. have to do that. Yeah, completely. Um, I just, I, maybe it's just the sour taste, Brian, but I just, I don't see it. We'll see. I mean, hopefully this is just the beginning of the changes to where you actually see them going in because you don't lose your sips like this in Sea of Thieves. That's yeah. why people go have fun. Don't think about it. There's too much cost in this. They need to yeah. figure out how to make it to where if you're going to have PVP, it can't be that costly. No other game with PVP does this that I know of other than EVE Online. You know, it's very specific ones that where people are playing real money and, you know, everybody is worrying about it. Yeah. And, and Firebomb's pointing out, so it's like, wow, major time investment. Yeah. I mean, for this, it has to be a huge time investment that no one at this point, because the game isn't worth it, are willing to put in that type of time investment. We were originally, right, everybody threw in time. The second that we saw, oh, you lose everything instantly and you lose all that time immediately and you can't get it back without, you know, just redoing it. We all lost interest almost overnight uh, once that happened to us. And so I think yeah. they're going to have to figure that out because I think that's most people. We're not the only ones thinking that way. Nope, we're not. But uh, the the, you know, the verdict is out for the public, Brian. And that, you know, the, the 
the play literally the players will decide one way or the other so uh yep wish them the best but i just i'm i'm not buying it uh and then finally there was an update from the long dark this is mainly okay. fixes uh disabled save performance improvements as they cause the player session to enter an unsavable state um, they introduced several safeguards against the potential crash. They fixed duplicate cargo containers appearing in Timberwolf, uh, Timberwolf Mountain. Um, and then a couple of art fixes. So just a small patch, but they also are doing that winter's embrace that they did from June 29th going through July 31st. That's the event that's going on for a while. So some of those fixes are specifically towards that event. Uh, so you still have time through the end of the month to be able to go and participate in it if you'd like to. Awesome. I think that's I think that's it. I think it is, which is a uh, an interesting uh, interesting uh, way, Brian, that we actually got to. Uh, it appears to most of our news here on uh, on the program. All right, let's uh, let's jump into current players real quick. Look at some video games that uh, people are playing and the current numbers of people playing them. Let's start it off with Ark Survival Evolved. Fifty thousand four hundred thirty eight people currently playing that. The 24-hour peak, 79,422, with a 7-day peak of 90,824. We went over to Rust. 58,307 is your current player count. 20, excuse me, uh, 80,816 is your 24-hour peak, with a 7-day peak so close to 100,000 at 98,300 and 33 moving on over to conan exiles currently playing this 9295 the 24 hour peak 13,066, and a 70 peak of 14,906. atlas picking up some players currently playing 4934 that's up about 5,000. excuse me that's up about 3,000 from where it was last week the 24 hour peak is up about 5,000, 6,433. And the 70 peak is up a similar amount as well, 7,335. And finally, seven days to die. Wow. 26,013 is your current player count. The 24 hour peak, 31,313. And Brian, a brand new all time record, seven day peak, an all time peak for this game, 39,222 reached two days ago, which would have been uh, Sunday, uh, some point on Sunday in the United States, July 5th would have been when this game reached its all-time peak, uh, just a couple hundred short of 40,000 current players. So obviously nice. they are trending in the right direction there. Uh, now, one thing, to die. one thing to keep in mind on those numbers, remember you had to go in, switch to a whole separate yep. build to be able to do the update. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to get 40,000 people to go and do a, an extra step they did right? uh i mean there's i'm sure there's some num percentage of those that are playing the regular build that didn't switch but i bet you most of those players are playing the experimental build uh and that shows you when you make anyone do an extra step on anything that cuts out a large percentage of people actually doing it and so they hit that number on an experimental build uh release platform and so that's that's very good numbers for them oh all it really shows is that people want to play the game really want to play it yeah and so i think if we if they can get those i mean they have that huge list of bug fixes hopefully they can knock through those yeah. uh you know in a reasonable amount of time and get it released onto stable so that'll be yeah. good all right well let's go and do tip of the week where i go through either a general gaming general gaming tip or one for a specific game and i figured since a lot of i'm sure almost everybody will, will be playing the fallout 76 xbox game pass version i would do one for fallout 76 so this is tip of the week All right, so in Fallout 76, uh, I figured I'd give a few helpful tips here for getting started on the PC. Uh, one thing that you will notice is in this one, uh, unlike all other Fallouts that we've had, you have no option to save your game because this is an online only game. Uh, the only way you can do it is to keep this in mind, you need to go to the menu and hit exit to have it properly save your game or else there's a possibility if you just Alt F4, or do some other, you know, if it's a window or something, hit the X, there's a possibility that it won't save your game correctly and you'll lose some progress. Uh, so make sure you go to the menu, hit quit. 
another thing to keep in mind is if you move your camp, that will cost you money. Uh, now, it's not just a flat rate for moving your camp. If you move your camp after you've made some progress, it determines the cost based on the uh, level that you are and the distance that you've traveled, I think, from the actual original vault. So you may want to, if you decide early on, you know, you place a camp and you're kind of like, I don't know if this is the right camp for me, do it sooner than later. Because as you progress through the game uh, and get more levels, it will cost more and more to be able to move your camp. So uh, that is something probably most people don't realize and maybe they realize it too late and then it costs them a lot of extra money. Uh, but, but keep in mind where you place your camp originally, try to put it in the best place because as you progress to the game, it will cost you more. And hopefully that helps you out in the upcoming weeks. Maybe we'll get a chance to play it here soon. And that is tip of the week. All right. Thank you very much for that, Brian. Uh, we appreciate it. Yes. All right. Um, so game of the week, are we planning on maybe doing some more seven days to die? Yes, sir. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. So I will make sure I'll spin the server back up, um, apply any patches that they've done. Cause I know that they did do that patch in the last day or two. Uh, and then we'll keep that up and going, but we'll have to decide maybe next week we'll do a wipe depending on the progress that's made through this week. Uh, or if there's substantial patches that are made that might affect, you know, what the buildings and the, the loot layout is, because this is an auto generated game. If you generate the world and the map on one version of the game, then when you go in, even if they've done a patch, there's a good chance that a lot of the things that are placed into it may be based on bu buggy code. So if they make substantial changes, improving loot and, or, you know, maybe building layout, we would want to wipe the map prior to that so that we can take advantage of some of the cool things that they fix. So we will see. We'll keep an eye on the patch notes and see if that's something we need to do. Yeah, there's a service right, channel we... in our, yeah, there's a service channel oh, yeah. in our Discord. Um, so if you're looking for news and the password for the Infection Podcast server, it's in there. Just uh, join our Discord and figure it out. Very good. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do the game giveaway here. I am going to draw and congratulations. Oh, it's Judd. So, oh, it's Judd. And uh, he's the one who actually does our pre and post show videos. Thank you very much. Yes, and uh, I will give you a key and I'll message it to you here on Discord. So, congratulations. And that is for Boundless. Awesome. Thank you very much. Is there anything much, else uh, we need to cover before we roll out of here? No, sir. I just want to thank a couple of individuals um, for hitting okay. us up with either first time or. Uh, uh, resubscriptions here during the program uh starting it off with uh our friend Chronix hit us up with one uh ugx vibe our friend ringo uh our friend joe gifted a sub to jay delory uh, big woody sauce uh, his sub is old enough to drink uh tag and moby all hit us up with the subscriptions here during the program gentlemen uh i, I think all gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for your support here on the program. It uh, it is greatly appreciated, and um, it, uh, I, I don't I don't think I can uh, articulate how helpful it is uh, and has been in the past with the events that we've gone to and will mm -hmm. be uh, with events in the future. Hopefully, PAX East and PAX West, one or the other next year. So we're very very thankful for uh, for your support. It means a lot. Yep, very good. All right, uh, ready for me to roll on out. Yeah, let's do it. All right. If you want to find me at Boise Computer on Twitter, of course, my blog, biteoftech.com. Uh, make sure you go to our website, infectionpodcast.com. If you do that, you can see on the right-hand side there, join our server on Discord. You can submit news. You can join us for uh, the game of the weeks and just a lot of uh, a lot of banter going back and forth and everybody kind of hanging out. It's a free service, very easy to use, uh, mobile, desktop, and web-based app for that. Uh, also, we have our Steam group. If you want to get a notification prior to the show, uh, within five or 10 minutes before we start the live broadcast, you get a little pop-up in Steam if you have it open, and uh, that'll make us so you can jump in, join us for the live show, join the uh, the game giveaways, things like that. Also, we have links to our YouTube channel, to our BitChute, to our uh, YouTube channel, and to our, what's the other one? I don't know why I Bit forget shoot. all these. Uh, well, no, I said bit shoot. There's one other uh, D Live. Uh, D Live, yes, oh, D Live yeah. is the other one. Uh, so if you want to get those are video forms, we do them live, and we also have on some of the platforms videos that you can watch after the fact of our show. So if you want to follow along, we'll have show notes now for all those episodes. So if you want to listen 
or uh, watch the video. You can pull up the latest show notes and click the links and see the articles as we're discussing them. And that's very helpful. If you'd like to support the show, there's a tab up at the top. Um, you can do that through humble.infectionpodcast.com through amazon.infectionpodcast.com or through the, as you heard here on the show, the various uh, Twitch Prime subs that we have. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link that to your Twitch account, uh, subscribe to us, and then half of the funds that, you know, it's like $4 and something cents, um, half of that goes towards us. And as you saw, we have people that have been doing that for over two years now, and we really appreciate it because that, as Nick said, makes a huge difference. So it allows us to go to different events. Yes, sir. Well, Brian, as always, thank you for uh, for all the work you do on the uh, pre-show here with the show notes. And uh, Brian's actually our webmaster, so he keeps the uh, the website and the RSS feed and the podcast and all that stuff up and running. So thanks, Brian, for all that stuff. And of yep. course, our game servers, uh, keeping all that stuff yeah. up to date as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much for all you no do. No problem. And um, we'll see you Friday night for seven days. And um, yes. then we'll see you again next Tuesday for another episode of Infection. All righty, folks. Well... If uh, you missed out live, I'll uh, I'll make the, the the play that you should join us. We're here every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. ish Eastern on Twitch. We're also co-streaming on D Live. It's dlive.tv slash infection podcast. And uh, we also stream on YouTube as well. As always, my name is Nick Craig. You can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. If you're on Parlor, check me out, Nicholas M. Craig as well. If you want to check out some of my IT antics, dudeinit.com. Of course, if you missed any portion of the show, show notes, videos, links, pictures, articles, things, all of that fun stuff's on our website. It's infectionpodcast.com. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Stay safe. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.